night in with Mauler and the drinker Getting trashed with the web screen ninjas A cheap night cause I'm feeling kinda thrifty Gonna send back a beer and a bottle of whiskey Hop off the cork, have a glass of wine That's hey. feel safe, I'll be fine Trouble walking in a straight line But for the Amino Noir It's open bar With our host, Mauler and the critical drinker All right, it's us. That's our cue. We should do stuff now, Mauler. Go into yeah, entertainment mode. <laughs> Mauler, give me a 30-second review of every movie you've seen in the past 10 days. Go. Oh, my God. It was really good, really bad, and okay. <laughs> yeah, I did it. Perfect. That's it. We're doing the stream now. We'll end it. <laughs> I can just end my career uh, I, now. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. You're no longer the long man. Uh, but hello everyone, this is open bar number 42, so oh, yeah, this is a busy one this week, there's kind of a lot been happening in the world of Marvel and Disney and, uh, well, comic books, Shazam too. it's been kind of a, yeah, mm. it's been kind of an eventful week, so there's a lot to talk about, I guess, uh, and there's a lot to point and laugh about, which is always good fun for us. Yes. Uh, shall we go ahead and bring our guests for this fine Let's evening? grab them. Okay. Uh, right, so, first of all, Gary! Hey, man. Hey! How's it going? Episode 42, the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Mm, Podcast is middle-aged. It's, uh, yeah, it's appropriate you're here for this one as well, mm -hmm. you know? So, Glad so, to be here. Thanks for inviting me. No, no thank you for talking about it. <laughs> yes can't wait to get into it uh yeah it's been it's been a good one uh mm -hmm. we'll bring in our next guest as well it's uh tom connors from midnight sedge hey man hello everybody oh my god i haven't seen I you must... on uh, on camera for ages well i will be on for a little bit here but i'm also doing a few things here and there so i might have to hop off here and there but yes no it's awesome to be here it's been a long time and i'm glad to be here on the 42nd episode like like gary said it is the answer to everything in the universe and uh, it's amazing to be here. Thanks, guys. Yeah, pleasure to have you no on, man. Uh, well, I mean, I guess I don't even want to have a preamble. I want to dive right into this first one because, uh, well, as you're all aware, um, things are changing within the world of Marvel. And um, one of their head honchos, Victoria Alonso, was fired. And I say fired because it's been more or less confirmed by Variety. I mean, if you'll bear with me a second, there's an, an article that they've put out just about today i think about this uh saying um so it, there's a little bit of a preamble about the the wonderful time she was having at the oscars and then it says eight days later she was fired as marvel's president of physical production post-production vfx and animation three individuals familiar with the matter told variety the shake-up came as a surprise to many in show business and within the vast marvel comic book fandom um Alonso's dismissal has raised numerous questions about behind-the-scenes workings at the prize content engine and with them, another unfavorable news cycle as Disney CEO Bob Iger attempts to stabilize his parent company amid economic unrest. I mean, I would call it like crappy <clears throat> content unrest, but you know, each to their own, I suppose. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, like three different people close to it have told Variety that she was fired, so I think we can probably go with that. She was already a bit sus with how quickly it happened and how little information there was. It's just like, hmm. Not yeah. Normally there would be a press release put out saying like, well, you know, um, she's decided to move on to pursue yeah. other ventures, and we wish her all the best. She's been fantastic, but there really Great hasn't. Career. She's just, yeah, she's just gone. So she's been looking been forward to spending more time with the family. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I've achieved what I wanted to in this role. You know. Yeah, time for the youngsters to time, time to go on to new challenges but i mean yeah like when this news first broke i didn't fully appreciate the significance of it like i wasn't as familiar with her work as as you guys and i say work quite loosely but um she's been with marvel since the oh, beginning she's a piece as of work. yes yep yeah um but she uh well the the, the my understanding is that um, as Kevin Feige got spread thinner and thinner over like 500 different projects that he's working on right now, she was able to step up and fill the gap. Um, and she was uh, a, <laughs> basically an activist first and a, and a movie producer second. And so she was able to start injecting all of that crap into Marvel. Hence, well, hence phase four, which is what we got. Uh, so, wow. Yeah, she's been a pretty influential figure and not for the better, I guess. 
No, not for the better at all. Uh, she was given that president position when uh, the money was rolling in, the investor money. They still had a lot of high hopes for streaming. Uh, and and I, this is just my speculation. It was one of those corporate, let's give, uh, let's give you a promotion, not in pay, but in status. And beware of that promotion if you've ever worked at a corporation before, because it's one that can uh, that, something that's been invented can be uninvented uh, immediately. Now, I think we have to temper this. It, it, things are not going to turn around at Disney because this is this is more of a condemnation of Kevin Feige than anything else. She was a fall guy. She was guilty. She was guilty of a lot of this stuff. But part, you know, she's not writing the stories. She might be involved in a lot of the intersectional feminism and a lot. She, 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 as it says in that article, Drinker, she made a brand of her own, uh, being the rare LGBTQ plus woman in Hollywood. I'm like, rare? Are you kidding me? You throw a rock up in the air, you're going to hit somebody uh, LGBTQ in Hollywood. There's nothing rare about that. Uh, what's rare is how much power she was given based on solely her identity. She has been a producer for a long time. She did a lot of stuff, but producer can mean a lot of things. And it doesn't mean you're going to be a good leader. Kathleen Kennedy is a great example of that. So um, it's I think it is an indictment of Kevin Feige. I think a lot of the responsible st responsibility still lays at his feet. This is just this is still a huge firing. Um, and uh, it's because they're losing money. It's that that's it. If they weren't <laughs> losing this much money that, and th believe me, folks, things are so much worse than they're reporting as you yeah. all know. They're so much worse than their reporting and look for stuff to get outright canceled at this point. They're going to have to, uh, cause like w w their big solution now is let's just kick the can down the road. That, that, n does that ever help with anything ever? But it, it's like, I was going to say, not, I was just going to say quickly, like, the, the, you know, the saying like where there's smoke, there's fire in this case, we're, they're letting us see the fire. So imagine what's actually happening. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I just, you know, the, when you're talking about things getting canceled, like I've, I've heard from people that Echo is, is having a lot of problems behind the scenes. Uh, I wouldn't be entirely surprised if that gets shit canned because there ain't no demand for that show. It's, it's already filmed though, isn't it? So, well, yeah, I know, but so was Batgirl, and then they they killed that at Warner. That, that, that's uh, that's the the guy at DC though is not quite the same. I imagine. I, I don't know. Maybe we could see our first ever MCU tax write off. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. The only reason I think Echo's got a chance to still happen is just because it's setting up Daredevil, which is filming right now. Um, right. So that's the only thing. Um, or it's tied in with that anyway. But no, I mean Gary's mostly right. Other than the only thing I will say is I'm not so sure about when the position was created. I don't know if it was necessarily because they were doing well. I think you're more right about the fact that this was created as a possible fall guy position because when she was given this specific role, because she's been a part of the Marvel Universe since the beginning, like the MCU. She has been there since 2006. Paramount. Uh, she, yep. She's been there since the very beginning. She's one of the original people that's always been there. Um, what they did, though, is they gave her the special role back in September of 2021. And it was mainly having to do with uh, the the final process of everything, the QC, right? Like she was post-production and delivery basically for all this kind of stuff. That was her job. And what have we been having the most trouble with in the last few years, like two years with Marvel? The problem has been they've always had to go back for reshoots. The special effects look like crap. We're starting to hear all these people complaining about the last minute they're changing all these things and we have to go back and reanimate them and we're you know working overtime and not getting paid for it and all this other crap that we keep hearing from a lot of the animators inside this all happened right at the same time it actually happened right between shang chi and the eternals being released so i think gary's more right in a sense that she was being set up to where if this shit didn't stop feige knew that somebody was gonna have to take the fall because just just before she got this position was when black widow came out and remember, ScarJo was going after the company, and Feige backed her instead of the company. And Chapek came after him, and after it was all settled, Feige said, well, I guess I underestimated Chapek. At that moment, they created this role for her. And this, this to me, reminds me of when Kiri Hart basically had her head ruled for solo failing, remember, back with Star oh, Wars. Yeah. So this is what it feels like to me is you have all these things built up. Ant-Man is going to lose the company at least a hundred, if not $200 million at this point. There's no getting around that. You can't spin that in the media any way, shape or form. They tried to hide the failure that was Wakanda forever. 
it was a huge failure for them. Sure, it made a little bit of money, but when you compare that to what the first movie made, and when these Marvel movies had a history of going up, 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 and all of a sudden they're going down, 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 if you take Spider-Man out of the equation, yeah. there's a problem there. Then you have problem number two, and that was this lady was one of the biggest instiga instigators in the, in the Florida bill. Mm -hmm. She came out on stage at the Glad mm, yeah. and said that she sat down Bob Chapek for 45 minutes and explained to him why this was important. Yep. I don't know about how, you, how, how many hundreds, how many hundreds of millions of dollars has that ultimately lost? Disney? That right there, get involved the in thing. that. Yep. Because yeah. the second, I'll tell you right now, two, they said eight days ago. Well, guess what? The second weekend that Ant Man came out, it almost lost a cocaine bear. And the only reason I don't think anything happened that day is because that's the same day DeSantis signed away the Reedy Creek deal. And if it wasn't for that, I bet you she'd have been fired that day. Yeah, stoking the flames of controversy, throwing your uh, basically calling out your boss, and a new boss comes in, and no matter how much he thinks he likes you or you might agree on stuff, he's going to go. Well, that bitch, <coughs> not my my predecessor, uh, my puppet predecessor. Uh, so she's got to go. Like she's she was obviously a problem. She was obviously you know like that that if you ever seen the the or heard the audio from that event from that uh, Glad event she was at. Where, where she, it's cringe it's bad it's i've never seen anything quite so con self congratulatory and so over dramatic in my life it was like i will never stop fighting for your rights it's like uh, come on man you're you're not you're not going to war or anything on yeah. this one like <laughs> give yourself a day off honestly yeah you're not malcolm x you're you're at a glad event making pretend with, with superhero movies okay yeah. calm down, calm down um, but to, to touch upon the point you made about the the VFX um, problems that they were having, um, there's a there's a quote from them in Variety in this article here it says, one visual effects artist recently told Variety that the biggest issue for them was Marvel's inability to provide clear guidelines. The show I was on really struggled because it was an established character whose powers uh, they were reconceiving for the MCU. The artist said on condition of anonymity. Most complaints they said came down to one problem. Marvel doesn't figure shit out beforehand. And this this ties in Shocking. with what I've been told by by VFX artists that have worked with them. It's like their life is nothing but constant re retooling, reshoots, um, and re like re edits basically. Like they'll they'll be given really loose guidelines from Marvel about what they want. They make something, Marvel will come back and say, No, we want it more like this. They change it, and then they get told again, no, we've changed our minds, we want it more like this now. And they end up doing the same shot like a dozen times because Marvel can't make up their minds about what they want. And that's why so much of their VFX looks like dog shit because it's had to be redone so many times. When they've gotten shit tons of controversies from different uh, CG artists complaining like all coming out and different people talking about that, that's been a topic as of late. And I've heard theories that that's part of it as well, that she'll be considered like, ah, oh, that was her. You see, she was the she was the whipping master sort of thing, and that you know now she's gone. So we, well, yeah, guys, we're listening. You know, things are getting better. We're just like this will change nothing. <laughs> like, Do you think just... part of, part of the problem as well? Will she have brought in people that have ultimately influenced the stories and the, the writing of certain movies to to include more of their you know their kind of propaganda and you know their, their so. ideology stuff. Because if you or rewind, is she kind of res is she outside her, of that? Her and Kevin Feige have brought in people. Yeah. Well, well, and if you rewind, when I said a while back, people are like, "Oh, that can't be true." I said somebody is going around in a big head honcho at Marvel saying they cannot use X Men anymore as a term. Nobody really believed me, but then she came out later and said that, "Yeah, I've been saying that we can't be using X Men as a term anymore because it's too exclusive." It's like I told you guys, this is who she is. So I guarantee you, she's brought in a lot of the activists into the company. Now she's not the only one, because like you just said. Kevin Feige bought into that Kool-Aid. Uh, Esposito or whatever bought into that Kool-Aid. Everybody else who's been there bought into that Kool-Aid too. So that's the problem we have here. So going forward, I don't think it's going to change much. But she's definitely been an architect of trying to push things like, you know, Ms. Marvel. And that's probably the show they're talking about right there uh, that, in that quote. Because that's one of the only ones they've really changed a lot of their powers on. It and, had to be Miss Marvel. I mean... I would. It's very arguable if it's if it's uh, she's an established character because I don't think so. She's a bullshit character. She's like. <laughs> well, that's my other point was too. Is I was going to get to is fits. and they did. Alonzo. <laughs> Alonzo was the one who was going around saying these superheroes aren't the character; they're the suit. So we can just keep oh, changing yeah. them out. That was her 
pushing that idea. That so agenda. this is why this is why we've got like fucking Ironheart and all this garbage, like and, and you know well, Falcon I mean, now being Captain America. That's a Marvel thing. That's a Disney thing. Who's yes. solely responsible for it? I don't know because this stuff was started back in 2014. Oh, she's a big fan of it, yeah. And I was told by David Gabriel at a retailer summit when I was still uh, working the comic shop. This was years ago, right around when Marvel bought it. That, that yeah, we want we want the films to reflect the comics. Now I was naive, and I thought, oh, they're going to make them look more like the comics. No, they're going to make the comics look more like the films, and uh, that's exactly what they've done. They've that's exactly what they've done. They've pushed into this all new, all different era because they just want mantles. And there's a lot of reasons for that. There is identity politics, there's intersectional feminism, and they're screwing creators out of residuals. Uh, you know, there, there's still a lot of holdover deals, and I don't know what they all are uh, to creators who, uh, you know, like uh, you hear a lot of artists talk about it on YouTube. Like they get residuals every time one of their characters shows up in a game, shows up in a movie. They get a little chunk of money. It's getting less and less over the years, especially when they rename these corporations. But it is a way to maximize profits, screw over creators, and push an agenda. All three, yes. Well, wow. <laughs> it it's such a thing. shitty thing to do, though, isn't it? Like, we we're gonna we're basically gonna ride the coattails of more popular characters and just like, use them as a springboard to launch our new shitty versions that are like infused with identity politics and we know that we're not actually like capable enough to write good characters by ourselves we just need to like take on the mantle of other ones that were popular it's just this this constant like snake eating its own tail bullshit it seems it's like horrible. they've established a whole new set of characters when really they've just spammed them on screen like they're just like look here's this one there's this one this one so it's like do you know how long it took for like all the main avengers to be like considered the at the level that they are it's like you feel like a fucking trilogy each what is that like some of these characters have just been bit parts in tv shows like what are, and then you got your even have their names ones. you got two established big characters that would have been really useful in a fight with thanos and you diminish them you have hulk and thor yeah. where it's noticeable you made one fat and one soy and like that that is not a good creative decision that is not something that will sell tickets uh to make room for captain marvel more it would have Endgame would have done better if we saw a Savage Hulk, a Raging Hulk, and a, a Thor kicking ass. Punish Thor. That's what everyone well, wanted. You know, like, yeah. Imagine Hulk had been the one to, like, destroy Thanos' like, spaceship that was floating yep. overhead and, like, you know, just absolutely annihilate instead of, like, bringing in Captain Marvel for a pointless two-minute cameo. But wasn't there, um... I could have sworn there was, like, a concept thing that they didn't end up going with where Ant-Man was going to throw Hulk that was going to throw someone else or something. There's some, like, crazy idea with Combining like more version of a fastball special, yeah, the X Men, yeah, yeah, and That's it's cool. like, well, unfortunately, Hulk's arm doesn't work, so you just have to, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, but it's fine, that's fixed now. Like, exactly. this major but... plot point from Endgame, it's like, oh, I just fixed it off screen for fucking She Hulk, oh, okay, Hulk. great. You can just write it so that the quote unquote damage he got from doing the snap enraged him, right? Like, cranked him up, and he went nuts, and then that's what gave him like that extra push to take on Thanos again. Why wouldn't you want to show that to us? And then, of course, Thor, like, as much as he, you know, he did fight uh, against Thanos and stuff in that endgame, but you watch Infinity War, and you watch this guy who's clearly fucking pissed, like, bring me Thanos when he's, like, all black and he's got the lightning coming down. It's, like, everyone's favorite moment. And then he loses everything. You're like, this guy's going to go nuts. It's like, no, he's going to he's gonna eat loads of cheese whiz. Uh -huh. You're like, oh, <laughs> okay. That was the beginning. <laughs> that was the beginning of it. You I don't know, get it, man. It's like, been downhill ever War... since then. Loads of people say like Infinity War was fucking great, and then Endgame. It's like, what happened? You guys but made all back, back. We got that shot with all those female superheroes together. Yeah. The the one and only good thing that Taika <laughs> Waititi did that. with Love and Thunder was get Thor back in shape, like in the opening montage. That's the yeah. only good thing he did with that fucking movie. Which was that was more just like you know transactional, just like I I I'm not doing the fat shit. From dead bud. Like, bud. Yeah. I, you know what I'm I'm pleased about with all this though, like the firing of of um, Alonso and just this. There's no hiding it now. There's no hiding the fact that like the MCU isn't in deep trouble because up until fairly recently there was just this blanket denial. You know, it's like no, it's fine. The movies are still making so much money. People love mm -hmm. it. You can't you can't criticize it. That's ridiculous. 
now there's just an open admission. If even the trades are talking about the, the problems with the MCU, you know it's bad. And they oh. know it's bad. They know that they're in trouble and they can't hide it anymore. When Bob you, Iger comes out and says, we're going to prioritize quality over quantity, right? that's pretty much your indictment. <laughs> yeah. <right there>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and hey, we were the canary in the coal mine for fucking like five years. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't say we didn't warn you. They get canaries hanging out in coal mines. That's oh, you guys cool. are going to notice. Schadenfreude next... is a fantastic word, and it's it like I'm experiencing a lot of it right now. <laughs> I was going to say, you guys are going to notice over the next two, three years here, there's going to be a lot of folks on the other side who are going to be like, you know, we need to quit this woke stuff. We need to quit this. It's just separating. They're going to stay, I'll say all the same shit that we've been saying oh, yeah. for the last five years. Oh, and yeah, they're going to yeah. act like they invented it. Uh huh. Yep. Oh yeah, because oh, Bill Maher's been doing that for a year now. So. Well, yeah, there's going to be a lot of people, like actors and stuff, when it's safe to do so, will be like, oh, I was never really in favor of this stuff. I was always uncomfortable with it, but, you know, I felt like I had to go along with it. It's like, yeah, fuck off. <laughs> like, you you absolutely chose your side when it was popular. Well, you, it was just yesterday, wasn't it? Anna, what's her name, Kasperian or whatever the hell her name is from the Young Turks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she was going out there. Did you see that, Gary? Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Ah, was she got raked over the coals because she was starting to talk about women's rights. I can't remember exact quote, but yeah, she. I don't want to get into it anyway for the politics of it all. But like, yeah, it's just it's getting there. We're getting to that point where a lot of these folks. I even saw an interview with uh, um, Sean Penn where he was talking about like he didn't quite understand a lot of this, uh, you know, pronoun bullshit and all this other stuff. And he even talked about you know accidentally getting almost getting with a trans one time and how he reacted all that and stuff like that and he's like yeah i don't get it. it's a little weird and, and then you know but until they start to say something different nothing's going to change unfortunately we could sit here and talk till we're blue in the face and they ain't going to listen to us because we're istophobes so yeah well, that well, they they've managed to to put us in that corner uh lucasfilm rewriting ripley we all know about that uh, supported by pablo hidalgo who was uh the lead you know executive and uh member of the story group uh, they have gone out of their way to silence critics uh, when secretly they knew their stuff was shit uh, and because they were pushing an agenda. Uh, and now uh, like, because the money has run out, not because they've seen, uh, you know, they've seen the light, which I would prefer. It's right. like, oh, maybe we went a little bit too hard on that one. No, it's we're broke and we can't support. And it just proves that all this virtue signaling BS has been BS. Like yeah. we've been saying. Well, yeah, but did, did Kevin Feige not come out and say you know, we can't, we're not going to back off from all of this stuff, like all this virtue signaling, all the, the political did. stuff. We just have to get better at disguising it and, and uh, you know, so people don't pick up on it quite as much. And it's like, well, that's not really fixing the problem, Kevin. That's just like, you know, covering it up a little also, bit. So how long are you going to sing that tune when uh, your films are starting to flop again and again and again, I wonder? So yeah. capitalism yeah. kicks in eventually. <laughs> like, well, the, your the stockholders is, are going to be like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Like, the thing is, once you get that um, adversarial like attitude amongst the fans towards your own company and your, the products you're putting out, it's really difficult to turn it's, that around. It's already dead, essentially, if you, unless you course correct quickly. And you know, Star Wars had course corrected in 2018, and Marvel course corrected in 2019. It might be different. Uh, but when you let it go too long, it it damages your brand. But their their hubris is no Marvel is now that red rectangle with the Marvel in it, and it's not what it really is. Spider Man, X Men, and you know the MCU to their credit did the impossible and took two B list characters, Iron Man and Captain America. I'll even say Black Panther and Thor, and turned them into household names where everybody knows who they are. And then they didn't recast them and killed them all off and made them fat. You know, it's like they're dumb. <laughs> They're just dumb. They're dumb Hollywood executives, and they think, well, we could just restart this at any time. No, you had your one chance, and now it's gone. Apathy will set in, and there's there's really no coming back from that. You know, uh, people will move on. You know, we've got a I've seen the chat mentioning it today. We got a movie that uh, is being, you know, positively reviewed. A couple of my friends have seen it and said it kicks ass. John Wick Four. It's just your basic ass action movie, and may and those are a lot cheaper to make. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is this is what makes me question actually like how much longer this genre has to go. I mean, I, I mentioned this in my Shazam 2 review. Like I feel like the comic book industry now or the comic book movie is going into its twilight years. You know, it's never going to die completely, but uh it's going to get harder and harder to 
really get like tentpole movies that people are excited about because so many things have been done already and so many people are just kind of burned out with it um you you can't just produce generic like standard boilerplate comic book films anymore superhero films and expect people to get excited that time has is, ended they probably could have gone a lot longer if they hadn't made so because like it's incredible they managed to make so much shit in a row look at all of phase four like a lot of industries and ips don't <laughs> well, get away with that Victoria Alonso. <laughs> no, you're 100 percent right, Mahler. It's and I've argued that too. It's not superhero movie fatigue. It's just bad movie fatigue, is what it is. Well, ra yeah, Razor Fist uh, yeah. made a really good video about this recently, where he said, like, well, yeah, but like that fatigue comes in a lot quicker when you make shit stuff. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not mutually exclusive. Like he he pointed out that even after the westerns were done, we still got yeah. outlaw, outlaw Josie Wales. We got like some really good westerns. You know? Well. Well, well, I think and, yeah. And for, I agree for, with him, for, but I would his, compare it not so much to the westerns, but the big budget Hollywood movie. Because you got to remember, this is more like when we were hitting the end of the '60s and into the '70s, right? Because the studios were spending ungodly amounts of money on shit like Cleopatra and Paint Your Wagon. Yeah, right. Like they were spending. What, what was the big difference of, between the '70s and the '60s? Is the the equipment got cheaper? Yes, and we're in the same space now. Like, and that's what I'm saying. It's very comparable. Like, I mean, I get the Western analogy, and I, and I don't say it's completely wrong, but I compare it just more to this idea of these big, bloated movies that Hollywood used to feed us. And I think it was Tarantino who basically said, you know, we got sick and tired of fucking musicals and, um, you know, these big bloated westerns that nobody gave a shit about. You know, it, it's we wanted something real and that's where exorcist taxi driver godfather rosemary's baby all these movies uh, uh easy rider ushered in a brand new era so we're on the cusp of that but i don't know what it's going to be yet and, and marvel i would compare that more to those kind of movies like we've we've come past this point where it's it has saturated the market so much it's even worse than westerns because westerns were just still just a genre like the superhero movies have taken over almost everything. And why, you know, it probably is Gary. It's probably Westerns again, because look at what Yellowstone's doing, right? All the, all the T Taylor Sheridan shows are taking off. And what do they have in common most? They're like the old classic Western shows back in the day, like Bonanza and up through Dallas. And then you also have like stuff like uh, Tulsa King, which is more like the old school kind of like procedural shows we used to get back in the seventies and eighties in That's a way. Great show. Great yeah. Show. And no, I, maybe that's where we're headed. Yellow, Yellowstone, I really like. Yeah, uh, uh, you got, have you seen Tulsa King yet? Critical no, Tulsa yeah, King's no, fucking I amazing, man. man. So I like Quentin Tarantino, but he's not the be all end all. I, he he said that no, no. he's one of the worst areas of movies, and he's but totally, I it, he's totally you know what on that. Did you read his book though, Gary? And I understand why he said that now. Well, yeah, because he, well, he well the, what I saw in, in an interview, and he was talking. Yeah, I know. I, I think we did get some good film in the 70s. We got some classic like that. That's kind of a golden age, but it was also like just so much fucking nihilism in the 70s. And we're re we're re-experiencing that nihilism now. And it was the 80s that brought back a lot of, you know, a lot of positivity and, and fun that uh, well, maybe yeah. just not to Quentin's taste. That's that's well, all. Yeah, it was the 70s. Like it was kind of defined by like, you know, economic problems like Vietnam, like kind of coming out of time, that. Kind of... I lived it. <laughs> yeah, it was dark. Yeah, well, like... and just just real quick, the 80s thing, because I've read his book and, and in the in the book, he gives a lot more context to it. And I agree with him more because he he's not saying that all the movies were bad. What happened was, is when he came out of the 70s, he was like they were afraid to take chances in the 80s. Everything was so much like the 50s where everything, had, even if you had an inexplicable ending that didn't make any goddamn sense as long as it was a happy ending. And he's like, the audience is right. He's like, I can't audio argue with the audience. They wanted to feel good when they came out of the, those movies. They didn't want Taxi Driver anymore in the 80s. They wanted Top Gun. They wanted these kind of movies where you felt oh, like, yeah. yeah, when you came out of it. Like, you know, you couldn't have Rocky end the way it did in the original film. That's why by Rocky 2 and 3, he had to win. Right, like, well, yeah, well, was it wasn't it like really? It was like Reaganism that really brought in this spirit of like that's yeah, what he meant. patriotism, Sorry, bombastic, that. over the top, like awesomeness, you know. And it, that that's why you got the, the, it was usually the all conquering American hero that won the day in the eighties movies. And no, he's not the end all be all. But to his credit, he also did point out that now is worse than then anyway. So <laughs> way worse. Well, it's nice that some people are catching up. Yeah. <laughs> And they're not they're not taking any chances now. It's it's worse than it's ever been. Well, uh, this, yeah. this is why it might, you know, to go back to your point about what's going to supersede uh, superhero movies. 
Uh, I've heard people suggest that it might be video game adaptations now. Like we've reached that point where we're actually capable of making pretty good That's adaptations good of things. I would but, argue, uh, I don't know if those will ever work because I think the stories work better in the games as somebody who doesn't game, but like, isn't that, a, way, Gary, isn't that uh, more experiential? Like if you're there and you're controlling the story instead of seeing somebody else's interpretation of it. This is why I, I think so. Like there's always be better, but because it'll especially adapt successful games. But think about it. House of the Dragon did really well. Well deserved. Lost of Us did better. So it looks like we may be sitting. Mario's going to make over a billion. Everyone's been saying it. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. If that launches like the N Nintendo Cinematic See, like, Universe, the last, of us, like, the, the last of Us talk died down towards the end to me. I'm uh, not gonna. I, I would. I would say that I think House of the Dragon talk lasted longer. I'm just saying the view counts uh, ended up surpassing. Uh, yeah, House of the Dragon, and you know they're already they're rushing season two already because that you know oh. that's happening if they think like I know I know. <laughs> like, but they, uh, the, the reason I assume they're rushing it from a corporate standpoint is they're like, holy fuck, this thing made money. People like this. But House of the Dragon also had Game of Thrones season eight. But it did. Exactly, it, yeah. Yeah. And and it still managed to do I, and I think House of the Dragon season two will do a lot better. On the I video game thing, I think you're right that they're gonna try to do some more video games because you're right, Mario is gonna possibly be the biggest film of this year. It has that potential. And on the other side, Last of Us has been getting a lot of talk. So I think they're going to attempt, but I think the problem, and this is just my opinion, I think the problem they have now is the opposite problem they had of back in the day when they tried to adapt video games. Back then it was because they didn't have much to work with. That's why the Mario movie from 93 is so batshit crazy because they didn't really have much of an established universe, right? Like it was just kind of randomness. But now you have overly... Uh, uh, you know, like Bibles basically worth of stuff with tons of games and all these, like, look at what happened with the yeah. Mortal Kombat movie that came out two years ago. Nobody could just enjoy it for what it was. Cause they're like, Oh, it didn't follow this continuity of the games. It's like, well, most of us have not played those 20 games, guys. Most of us have not picked up a Mortal Kombat game. I, I, yeah. Kombat I mean, three. like, I, I think well, something like Mortal that, Kombat right? was always going to be difficult to weave into yeah. a movie because it doesn't really have a narrative. It's a fucking fighting tournament game, and it's just I just exactly. want to see people get their their fucking skulls funny, ripped out of their body. But as as a guy know, who's played a lot of Mortal Kombat, you're so wrong. But for the raw, raw, right reason, I would say like the Mortal Kombat is heavy <laughs> with, with narrative. Don't you tell me what oh, I yes. am, Mauler? <laughs> you know what's the best part, Mauler? Have Kombat. you ever read the original script? You know what sucks is if we'd have got the original script, more people probably would have liked that movie. The guy who wrote wonder woman 84 came in and destroyed that script though it doesn't surprise me well the, you know to take to take a more conventional example say if you were to well the last of us was a good example of a very narrative driven game and so that's relatively easy to adapt because you've got a linear plot like there uh in theory something like the uncharted games should have been really easy to adapt yep um because they've got like Ad classic adventure stories with like well-developed characters good you know good action sequences that you could adapt quite easily uh they they just fucked it up because they tried to tell an original story with completely the wrong casting with but a little like, boy that, yeah yeah in theory that should have worked really well but like you, you could take something like the metal gear solid games for example or um you know Things like that can be done because they've got yeah. very strong narratives woven through them. Uh, and I think maybe The Last of Us is going to open the floodgates to that. Well, it's um, funny, right? Because even if you have nothing to work with, like League of Legends' law was all over the place. Arcane came out of it. So, you know, they can pull things together. Last um, of Us is easy, though. Sorry. Wait, sorry. Did easy. I say Last of Us? I meant... Oh, I was talking to... Mo oh, right, Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I thought I had said it. I was like, Fuck, I didn't mean that. just another. Sorry, it's just another post-apocalyptic zombie story. You know that, like, I, I'm sure it's compelling in the game, and that's fine. We all know where it leads, though. That five iron. <laughs> yeah, no. And, oh, and, and yeah. If they make that same mistake, they're going to experience the exact same uh, pushback from the audience. I don't know what they're they're thinking if they think they can get away with that again. Oh, Neil Neil was feeling so good about it. He tweet he tweeted that uh, muscly arm. That's yeah. obviously a dude, but that's Abby Smash is coming. Oh. Yeah, I I honestly think they're going to cast that girl from uh, Mandalorian. You know the one that was in like episode three. Girl, the, the big the big buff girl. Like probably, oh, you know. Bro. Yeah, yeah, dude. Okay. Uh, free, let me I mean, like, uh, yeah, more, more or less. <laughs> she was in. Uh, she was an Ant Man. She, she, she was. Yeah. She was yeah. Ant Man. I, uh, when um, someone pointed out, I was like, oh fuck yeah! What? Who's this lady then? <laughs> well, they, she she is like she's like Ginger Jesus, you know, yeah, from uh, from Falcon the Winter Soldier. It's like 
they they get actresses like that and they just put them in fucking everything disney like they just slot them to every show to you try and make them happen checks every box for us yeah go but yeah like i i don't know if she's like a uh an mma fighter or something i'm not sure what her but background she's a is black belt like right you know, she, she, well, yeah, like I said in that one thread when we were kind of goofing on her, I'm like, be careful, guys. She could kick all our ass at once. Well, th this is the thing. Like, I, <laughs> I would uh, I would feel bad for her if she was cast as Abby because she's going to get so much shit. Mm -hmm. She's going to get so much well, abuse. And it's not going to be deserved. Like, she's just an actor, ultimately. But... Well, and I think I know why this show is so popular despite the Abby smash business because I have a friend of mine who's been my best friend since forever. Um, like, we 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 known each other since before kindergarten. Um, he, he is my gauge for a lot of this stuff. And he come at me about two weeks, three weeks ago, whatever it was when, uh, last of us started, he's like, have you been watching last of us? I'm like, no, he's like, why not? It's amazing. It's great. It's awesome. It's blah, 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 this, blah, 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 that. I'm like, well, I know where it goes. He's like, what do you mean? I've never played the games. I'm like, oh, you'll find out. And I had you'll to explain to him the whole Abby smash business. And he's like, oh, wow, that's fucking stupid. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And apparently, they're not going to change any of it, which I'm not sure I believe. But hey, we'll see what happens. But if they don't, they're going to get the exact same result. <laughs> it's not like there's, it's like there's a contingent of it'll be different people. this time. Mahler, we're Hollywood. We know better. They know uh, better. We're better than you, and we know it. Than, yeah, and we know it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll explain to you why you're wrong in three or four different articles in the next week. Don't worry. Uh huh. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Those little pieces of things that are happening all over the place, and then to know we've got Bioshock, God of War, Gears of War, Fallout are all on the way. It does feel like there may be something of an era oh, coming. Fallout uh, by Lisa I, Joy. Well, so this is the thing. God of War, that's getting made by the people who made Wheel of Time. So it's like, oh, so uh, this, you know, as no surprise to any of you, we're going to have plenty of shit. Like, of this, this is the problem, right? Do all these great franchises, do they just, did they get bought over by like shit? production companies like a long time ago and it's like you know we didn't think they were worth much and so we were happy to sell them to any studio that was willing to produce them and so they end up in the hands of absolute morons well when you have two sides it, to it sorry Muller, go ahead my bad i was just gonna say when they hand it to people like that you're just like why do you hate money why don't you want money but, you're just like, it, people it would pay. Be, <laughs> but it, is there an element of like you know legit um you know studios writers directors still look down on video game adaptations and just think ah, i don't want to oh, get yeah. involved in that yeah. video and games so that's why they end up it. with like the b team adapting them well um, i don't know if if you guys would have experienced it a bit maybe when you were younger but like films had to earn their right in the media landscape because it was like ah you 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 you're like lesser forms of media games are currently at that point or at least they're moving out of it with people like video games they're for kids like what oh yeah the video meaning. games that make more money than hollywood combined like the, the industry that's that dwarfs hollywood yeah that industry yeah it's the thing no, right? I wonder if they're just... and seeing colors on the screen sorry go ahead no i was gonna say i think there's two sides to this first you have a lot of these video game companies that owned a lot of these ips got all bought up and conglomerated under a couple different companies and like half of them are already owned by the studios mm -hmm. right so like we mentioned mortal kombat earlier warner brothers owns mortal kombat flat out Right, like so, like that's not even something like they had to license. But as far as like licensing some of these things, I think yeah, you're right. The studios have been kind of back and forth on whether or not they should. But if we keep having successes like Last of Us and the way we know Mario Brothers is going to happen, yeah. it's gonna we're gonna probably get another Double Dragon. We're probably gonna get another. Yeah. <laughs> we know we you got know Streets what, you know of Rage coming. Uh, and... Well, you know what I think is going to happen, right? When as it becomes increasingly clear that that comic book or superhero movies are kind of dying out. Uh, they're going to look for the next thing to leap onto. They're going to exactly. look for the next bandwagon to jump yep. on. And if it turns out to be video games, they will throw so much fucking resources yes. yep. at that. Like yep. It's going to be well, ridiculous. And make no mistake, a lot of these producers, they would love to get away from these superhero movies. And this is probably why nobody's stopping a lot of this bad-mouthing in the press lately of this stuff, because producers hate them because they are expensive as hell. And they are a gamble, especially now they're becoming even more of a gamble uh, because we're talking two, three hundred million dollars are spent on these movies. That's on that's just, when everything everywhere all at once was made for less than 40 million dollars. There's no excuse. And the only reason yeah. that movie was made for so cheap is because all those actors did it for next to nothing because it wasn't a superhero movie. Right. But now you get Michelle Yao in a superhero movie. She's going to demand five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten million dollars now. 
So yep. that's a problem. And, and we don't have the problem is they've done in the process of the superhero business. They've killed the movie star. We don't have movie stars anymore. You can't say, oh, I'm going to see the new so-and-so's movie and it means shit anymore. You know, you used to say, I'm going to go see this new Stallone movie. And Gary would know exactly what I was fucking talking about. But it didn't matter if it was an IP or Rambo 3 because we just went to see a Stallone movie, mm -hmm. right? Or a Schwarzenegger movie or whatever it was because we went for the movie star. Tom Cruise is probably the last true movie star, right? But even that is hit and miss with some of his stuff. Chris Pratt's the closest I could argue to somebody who's close to being a movie star maybe ryan reynolds but even they're not mm, yeah I think proven. So as well like chris pratt's not a he's not a draw necessarily that's what i'm saying like i can't even make that argument and and not say yeah there's probably some caveats yeah, to there, it right there used to be directors that were draw like stanley kubrick you know james yeah. cameron the, uh, like we, we would not, yeah. even, not even spielberg could pull people in anymore no mm. no Nolan is the closest. Oh it. it pains me to say this; it really does. But the closest thing we have to a movie star in this generation now is The Rock. It and he's really not that pains big me of a movie say. star. Well, yeah. he, he's well, even he's fifty now, so he's not exactly a spring chicken well, anymore. Well, right? what I mean was he's like he's 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 more or less like a, a faux movie star. They tried to pretend well, he is, but yeah. look at it. Black Adam is pretty much his highest grossing movie, and that flopped. I was going to say, yeah, like that yeah. that. There was the assumption that, like, well, the rock's in it, so it's going to be this massive it. hit, and like it, it flopped, and so it really put a dent in his like box office aura, I suppose. Well, have you guys heard about what's been said recently that he like he was going pretty uh, bullheaded with that whole thing? Even he kept out Zachary Levi from having a cameo in Black yeah. Adam. Oh, the the yeah, uh, we should. Well, I guess well, we could just move on to this. Well, this, well that was what I was trying to say. Yeah, uh, sorry. Yeah, no, it was something I was going to bring up actually. The the whole um, furor around Shazam too, just basically like bombing hard. Um, there's all kinds of things that's emerged in the wake of this about, yeah, like what The Rock was mandating, what he would allow. Um, you know, apparently he interfered quite heavily to to make uh, Black Adam more of a hero than a, a complete anti-hero or an antagonist, like what he was meant to be. Um, and he didn't want anything to do with Shazam. I assume his rationale there was like Shazam is just this goofy um, I think know, so. comedy character and he just didn't want to be associated with that because it's not cool enough. Um, well, yeah, yeah, you he think, he thought he knew better than like everybody and was just like, trust me, I got this. And then that happened. So <laughs> Well, I can, I can, assume, I can assume his his mindset was like, right, I'm agreeing to come into this. Like I've stayed out of superhero movies all this time. I'm going to come in. But if I'm doing it, I'm doing it my way. And, you know, I'm going to mold this into a, a new franchise, uh, a yeah. new cinematic universe centered around me. Uh, and it turns out he couldn't make it work. Like, he's not that big of a draw. He himself cannot, like, save a franchise. I wonder, though, had he been, had Black Adam made a billion and a half, it was never going to. But let's say it did. We may have actually been able to keep Henry Cavill. Oh yeah, this this would not be like we wouldn't be looking at the James Gunn version of DC if Black Adam had been this incredible like Avengers level hit. They they would have fully moved on with this slightly like tweaked version of DC. Like we would have probably kept Henry Cavill, we would have kept Wonder Woman, we would have kept Aquaman, yeah. probably wouldn't have kept Ben Affleck. But you know, we we would have moved forward with that and a retooled version of the DCU. But as it stands, like, yeah, that movie flopped and that was the final nail in the coffin. That was enough for them to say to James Gunn, right, okay, you've got carte blanche to, to reshape this because this isn't working. It's it's still not working and it won't work. No matter what, like, them releasing all of these lame duck films, Blue Beetle is still coming out. Uh, is that still happening? Uh-huh. And oh uh, shit, I've forgotten that was on Flash. And you and I both know how expensive that movie is. And Aquaman is ultimately damaging their brand. And and if you're still releasing it, it, it would be better not to release any of it and be, have nothing coming out. And you'd have a better chance of succeeding than rolling right from like Aquaman into <laughs> Superman. Like, and then then the authority, nobody like the authority is going to flop as hard as Shazam or or Black Adam or might may do worse. You know, and unless you have like an awesome yeah, you need to it, it's not gonna do well. I, I need the recognizable I mean, I names. Yeah, I mean, I assume that James Gunn and and the guys at DC had, you know, they had conferred and they probably all recognized like, okay, these holdover movies, 
you know, Shazam 2, Aquaman 2, The Flash, we know they're probably going to flop, all of them. But, like, we've made them, we've invested the money, we have to release them one way or another. Like, I assume whether or not they do well is irrelevant to James Gunn's status. Like, they're not going to blame that on him. But it won't be irrelevant to the brand. And no, it won't be you're irrelevant right. to, like, it, even Marvel's hurting them. Like, Marvel's string of absolute failures that was the MCU hurts DC, too. And, and just look at the announcement. Look at... Look at the energy on YouTube. You can judge if people are into something based on views of certain creators. There's no energy. There's no enthusiasm around DC right now. No. Like, it, his announcement was pathetic. It, it was it was done in that well, little room. <laughs> you know, it's like, wow. It was poorly timed, but I also wonder if there wasn't a reason for it. For, I, I wonder if they're not pulling a Mel Brooks producers here. Because I was hearing that the only reason The Flash and any of these other movies that are big ones weren't getting canceled is because of back end deals mainly, and uh, like uh, deals they had with like toys and McDonald's type deals or whatever, you know, like the fast food, you know, all that stuff, the tie in stuff. Uh, so I don't know if that's part of the reason. But if the, the thing is, is if they release these movies and they don't make any money, they don't have to pay anybody anything. Because remember how much they had to pay out for uh, Wonder Woman eighty four because of that whole shenanigans, like. <laughs> I think that's why these movies are coming out, and I think that's why they announced it early. Because I'm sitting here scratching my head, going, "It doesn't matter. Why did they? Why didn't they just wait until December to announce this? Because it doesn't make any sense. Because we're not going to see a movie until 2025, and all this 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 other stuff is yeah, just what they've already had in production. Is it is it just a momentum thing as well? Like if they suddenly just stop making movies for like two years or three years potentially, uh, while they get the new brand, the, the new like. Um, well, it's kind of what they're doing. film off the ground, like yeah, but like uh, at least over the course of this year, they've got something coming out. And is their rationale like, well, even shit movies that are not going to do well is better than nothing at all because yeah, it just we, makes we it are... like people forget about us. I, I think that would still be better. I mean, that's that's, that's a logical <laughs> assumption, but like we are two years away, two solid years away from and 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 some change of Superman coming out. It's July, June or July of 2020. July 2025, yeah. Yeah, that is a long freaking time. So much can change in the world. That'll be post another election. This will be a different world uh, when that happens. And the superhero superheroes will, might not be a thing. I mean, that's, you know, like, how uh, do we see anything promising? Uh, like, the most promising thing are digging up old stuff. Like, Disney had to go to Fox X-Men to get any energy with de- with Deadpool three yeah. and bringing back Wolverine, you're bringing back a fifty plus year old. Hey, hail to that, uh, Hugh Jackman, yeah. uh, to get any energy at all. And yeah. the, the minute they announced it, they delayed it. They delayed it the next, like within a week. <laughs> they delayed that damn movie. <laughs> they announced the release date and delayed it. So and and all that that article, that article aside from saying Kevin Feige didn't do anything. To stop Victoria Alonso being fired, they made they made sure to point that out. They also said there were five Disney Plus projects supposed to come out this year. Five, five, and they haven't released one yet. They haven't released a, a series since She Hulk, and I think at best we're going to get two, which are Secret Invasion and Loki, if we get those. And those are supposed to be the good ones. That's yeah. not Echo and yeah. Ag- Agatha Harkness and Ironheart. So I, say, I think the Ironheart those those bad. shows have got to be dead in the fucking yeah. water. They must know that nobody wants to see them. Nobody was... gives a shit about Agatha Harkness. Nobody gives a shit about Ironheart. Dude, we got and... Agatha Ant Man is falling apart. Why do they like this? Is a suicide mission at this point? Like, <laughs> well, yeah, they well, are. I was hearing the 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 uh, Ironheart show was like having trouble way before any of this stuff started coming down so i wouldn't be surprised if that's the first one we hear is not happening uh so but oh, I, I think that's going to be happening we're going to hear a lot of these shows are not going to happen uh x-men 97 uh killed itself uh yesterday with a, with a headline that came out so dumb which is sad because i think that? isn't that the same guy who was talking about henry cavill on the witcher and how they yeah, went, uh, yeah he was same guy yeah, he's this, well, yeah. Bo de Mayo. Then he came out and said, "Well, we're going to see X Men '97 through the lens of I'm paraphrasing of a gay black man." Of course. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> how about that's human, my favorite lens. How about a human lens? Try the human lens. That's why Bo de Mayo. That's who. Yeah, Bo de Mayo. Is, yeah. Um, yeah. It's like this is a meme at this point. Like this whole idea of like, oh, you know, as a you know transgender like 
quadriplegic dwarf this is how i see the world and it's just <laughs> you know it always has to be framed from this certain like dimension like this really specific like everyone has to be slotted into specific categories and like you say why can't it just be like well as a human like this is this is the world as i see it and like we're going to tell like universal stories that everyone can kind of understand um this is this is nice. why right i gave shazam to a tiny bit of credit because it was Ooh. like <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, but it was just, it was an inoffensive movie. It was much Better like Black man. Adam. Yeah, they weren't Better trying man, to yeah. push some shitty um, sociopolitical messaging on us. They weren't trying to indoctrinate anyone. Uh, they weren't trying to make you feel guilty for existing. It was just a generic superhero movie. Its biggest crime was this, it was kind of dull and forgettable. That that was pretty much it. And yeah, like, I'm sure, Molly, you can point out that it was kind of dumb at the same time. But um yeah that was the worst thing about it is you know it just wasn't very memorable but the spirit of it i guess or the intent behind it felt like it was kind of good if that makes any kind of sense like i didn't feel like it was trying to do anything um nefarious well, like most you of the can Marvel say that about the first does. one as well right like david f sambu yeah. as much as he and zachary levi are whining on twitter constantly um i think the the movie they made was pretty chill it's like that was the goal anyway like I think it's really poorly written, but yeah, it's it's just like, look, heroes doing hero things, villains doing villain yep. things. It yeah, didn't like you're, you're... to make one of the heroes fat or soy or like it. It didn't do any of that. Yeah, I mean, actually, bunch of Mandalorians had... fight a crocodile badly. Or something. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it, it actually had uh, it actually. <laughs> it it actually had attractive women in it as well, which is a fucking like it's everybody like was commenting shit. on that. The, yeah, uh... yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> wow, they they had attractive actresses that looked like actual women, and they put them in tight fitting costumes. Like, who knew such a crazy idea could still happen in this I day know, and age? Okay, I'm not judging you, but hey, if you're that into Helen Mirren, all right, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah, no, <laughs> I can't believe how fucking old she is. She's like almost eighty now. I think yeah. she's seventy eight now. Like, damn. <laughs> what did you think about her performance of that movie? It's. It, I think she was given about 20% of her acting potential. <laughs> yeah, I thought so too. Did she I say in an interview she had no idea what the fuck she was doing? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah that, that's how it comes totally out. <laughs> Tom, like, after seeing her in 1923, because I just watched she's it. She's awesome. Like, yeah, she's great in that. And then you see that, and you're like, oh, shoo, shoo, I mean, it just out. imagine imagine going to your gran or something and being like, yeah, so I want you to be this superhero character in a big suit of armor <laughs> and fighting okay. people and stuff. <laughs> Man, you're playing... Villain. I am trouble going to the bathroom. <laughs> Look, I'll tell you this much about her. I don't know if you guys saw our Blood In, Blood Out uh, uh, reunion show we did on Midnight Sedge, but like, I will always give Helen Mirren a pass because we're sitting here doing the interview, and, and her husband happens to be the director of that film. And he was on the thing, and he's just sitting there. All of a sudden, this head keeps popping in behind him. And we're like, what the hell is that? And then finally she comes on screen and she goes, hi, boys. I just wanted to say hello and see what you guys were doing and talking about. He's just so interesting. And she was just so bubbly. And it's like, how is this woman like in her 80s or what? It's like, no way. She was just like, just so much fun and energetic. And she was great. So I always give her a pass she for that. She's <laughs> caliber, dude. Come on. She's she caliber. seems, uh, yeah, she seems pretty chill. I'll give her that. She seems awesome. but when you tell her that you're going to be playing a god who is the daughter of Atlas, a titan, and you're going to be coming for revenge because the powers were taken and given to Shazam, a bunch of children, she's going to be like, I'm sorry, what the fuck are you want? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think our next question would be like, so how big is my paycheck for yeah. this one? <laughs> Dude, that's definitely what Lucy Lou said, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. No, but but it, was, well, it, was, it was, again, very much like Black Adam, where you had guys like Pierce Brosnan uh, in it, and like, great actor just didn't really get given a huge amount to do you know just kind of wasted in the role drop everyone else fuck it yeah <laughs> still bitter about that like a movie that starts out in like first world war where he's a kid we go through like the ages until he becomes dr fate like good god why don't you just do that i know you hate money <laughs> oh, take my money god damn it we will pay for these things. We will support them. You know please. what's funny? But that, that's what I actually have heard it, Dr. Fate, not Black Adam before this shit. But yeah, sorry. Well, yeah, this is what you could have got. Like, if Black Adam had been some crazy success, you might have got these weird, like, prequels and stuff, like, exploring the, the origins of these characters. Because, again, like, the, the, what was it, the American Justice League or something? Like, or Justice Society? Yeah. They, they were 
they were all quite nice characters. I quite liked them. Well, like the all, actors were good. The it's golden age characters in into a, a pre Justice League. It's golden age DC characters. So you could have done so much with them to establish a DC universe, and uh, they didn't, including yeah. uh, Black Adam and uh and dr fate which would have been awesome uh but you could have had uh the original green lantern in there too they they, they could have done so many things but they didn't alan scott uh, and that's a good comic book by the way i'm sorry snyder fans you're gonna get mad jeff johns wrote a great run in the mid aughts that's some of the best dc i've ever read so you know then by the way have uh, you seen zachary levi has been complaining about how it may be side of ads that ruined the box office. It's like, what the fuck? No, no, it, it, <laughs> no. It, Warner Brothers, it's you. You are the dumbest company on the planet, and you're still doing your dumb shit. Uh, I'm glad Zaslav is there cutting stuff, but I haven't seen anything different from, from the previous regime that just didn't know what the hell they were doing. And even James Gunn came out and said they were just throwing out checks because they knew people like crazy people, you know, like, like idiots. Like, they're two in their own bubble as well because they're like, we made a really good movie. Wonder Woman turns up in it as a cameo. This is a sequel to a movie people really liked. Surely it's a it's a hit. Well, all of us were like, Shazam's gonna fail. <laughs> That's gonna fall apart. Yeah, it had everything going against it because, like, as much as the there was a decent fan reception for the first one, it wasn't a big earner. You see the big that difference wasn't a... between previous goodwill and none at all, right? So Star yeah. Wars still living off of goodwill <laughs> from twenty years ago. Uh, but like DC never really developed it with the Snyder fans, sure, but not with the general public. That's that's an objective truth. And uh, Shazam 2, which was better than Ant Man, completely flopped. But Ant Man probably should have done what Shazam 2 did, but they're still living off the goodwill of Marvel, which is dying quickly, which Chuck has Nixon, lasted way longer than they deserved it to. Chuck at this Nixon, point. Legend comic book writer came on BBC two like uh, multiple times, but his first appearance said, and you were there, Mahler, when yep. the door shuts on this stuff, it will shut fast. And it's shutting fast right now. Well, yeah, look at all the news we've had in such a small amount of time. Uh, all these like the, the projects falling apart, being pushed back, being canceled, people getting fired like on mass and then big roles at the top of the chain. You know, imagine yeah, that's, that's what I was trying to say earlier, like we see it this bad. This is publicly what we can see. Imagine what's going on up there. Ooh. Yeah. Once this stuff starts as well, like it, it becomes a quick chain reaction. You it know, does. Yeah. It, you know, once it begins to spread, it's like the words out. It's like blood in the water, basically. Yeah, you've definitely. already admitted that you've 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 you're failing. Well, uh, like in the um on a different stream was like a lot of people saw Endgame who didn't even care about superheroes or the MCU because it was a huge cultural event yep. to see this huge movie. It is now partly becoming a cultural event to avoid superhero movies. Everyone's yep. sort of like fucking superhero movie. My I spoke to my sister about it. She said she doesn't even know which one she hasn't seen or has seen anymore. She's like, I can't tell what the fuck's going on. Well, we were hating on superhero movies before it was cool, okay? <laughs> yeah, because it's kind of gotten where Star Wars has gotten to a point where we got there. Of course, now we haven't had much Star Wars other than TV shows lately. But, you know, it was like there was this factor of it where, yes, if it was good, you couldn't really argue about oversaturation. But since we've had so much and so much of it's been so bad, it none of it feels special anymore either. That's the thing, like bringing up Endgame, like... None of these movies that have been announced, nothing feels special about them. Like, they're trying really no. hard with The Flash, but I think it's going to be funny when everybody who's so jazzed up about The Flash realizes that, oh, shit, we just watched Man of Steel all over all over again, but with a chick. I, so I much feel that's what the movie um, is at the end I of the just, day. I feel so bad <laughs> for Michael <laughs> Keaton because... Like thirty years after, like of not playing Batman, and it's like he's he comes back under this regime. He yeah. was gonna come back in Batgirl. That got shit canned, so we'll never see what he was gonna do there. Uh, he comes back in the Flash. That movie's almost certainly gonna flop, despite him being in it. It's just like, god damn, like. <laughs> what can I even liken it to? It's like you, you've spent like, uh, yeah, it's like you've spent like 20 years rehearsing a part in a play and then the moment you get out on the stage, you just fall over and shit your own pants. You know, <laughs> like that's... Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, like post Birdman, and let's keep in mind, Michael Keaton turned down Batman forever when it was popular and he would have made tons of money, but he, he cared about his career enough. That, like we don't see that with actors nowadays. You know, they, they rarely turn down roles, and he t turned down a huge freaking role. Well, it's because he doesn't give a shit about this stuff. He flat no. out said it. Somebody asked him something about Spider-Man, his role in that. He's like, I don't know. I didn't watch a fucking movie. 
He's like, I don't watch this crap. <laughs> fucking spider like, people. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't give a crap. I, I don't think he gives a crap that the Batgirl movie no, didn't come out. They don't give a crap now either, Tom. They just don't. They don't no. They no. They don't care. Like there isn't a, a reverence for the art anymore. And you're even, that's why you're seeing so many old actors come back because they're like, oh, at least we get a pay. Well, hey, hey, Gary, you, you know, know why Michael the, the Keaton did people... this? Because he got twenty million dollars. That's why. Sorry. Hell yeah, yeah. I, I do it too. <laughs> there's two. There's two actors I've heard about that care about the source material and shit out there. It's called Henry Cavill and fucking General Tager, apparently. <laughs> like she oh yeah, shit. I know General uh, Tager. There you go, there's some really interested in interviews, now, isn't it? Like they're they're being painted as problematic to work with now. Yeah. I can't believe it. Uh, they gold dust actors who care about the fucking characters. You kidding me? Yeah. Like, come on. Like like Jenna Ortega was straight up the reason that Wednesday was successful. Like if they had Pretty a different that. actress in that role, it would have fucking flopped. Like yeah. she made that show 100. percent yeah, and apparently she cared about what lines were being delivered and whether or not Wednesday would say them. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, well, there was was there not a bit they 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 wanted her to like go dress shopping and be like, yeah. oh my god, this looks beautiful, and then immediately say like, oh, I hate myself for saying that. And she was like, there is no fucking way on earth that Wednesday Adams would say something like this. And it's you, like, you, yeah, you understand the character. Holy shit, you actually care about this stuff. You want more of them. You want you want them everywhere, but for some reason they get pushed out. It's like, oh, oh, and then she got called out at, by a writer I respect. Yeah, ah, I was so, and he sounded like such a bitch. Stephen denied <laughs> him. Uh, he sounded like such a bitch. He's all, that's a little toxic to hear it from the actors and everything. It's like, dude, oh my god. Uh, the one, the only point, Christ. a grown ass man using toxic yeah. in a sentence that's like unironic. Yeah. No. The, the moment anyone uh, says the word toxic, I'm like, you're a fucking prick. And was, he the same <laughs> as toxic Gary? <laughs> was he the same one, Gary, who made the only point that I saw in that whole thing that actually made sense to me? And there was one person who made one point, and that was as a writer's like, sometimes we have things that are being set up that need, they need to be said a certain way, that if you don't say them a certain way, or if you cut out a line, it can totally screw up things down the road. That's the only thing that anybody brought up that made any sense to me about this whole thing. Yeah, he, but even he, then, they're not seeing but, the entire picture, but maybe she is. Maybe she read the entire script. Maybe, she, you know, like we, we can't well, explain that. No, I, call, I call me, call me, call no, me crazy, wrote, right? But would, he wrote for Daredevil. He's a, I, like yeah. a writer I respect. Yeah. No, call me crazy. Would, would the writers and producers of a show not brief the actors about like the arc that their characters are going on and how all this fits together into depends. a bigger picture? It really depends because. Uh, say who i had the conversation with but uh one of the biggest problems i've repeated it a lot sorry if you've heard it before but uh, we have a lot of new people because of diversity and inclusion and they are being linked to what few established people are left because th th it's they're being forced on them like a writer will go okay i got this project i want to bring my friend in they're like no 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 you have to pick between these five people who are all diverse <laughs> because of our diversity <laughs> yes this is actually happening it's happening yep. today and you get this inexperienced writer, and then you have two writers together who don't know each other, don't trust each other that much, and the new one doesn't know television. And streaming is television. It's episodic television. It's something yeah. you've got to know how to write. And there's a lot of people coming in from film because they're getting less work in film, coming in in television, and they don't know what the hell they're doing, John Favreau. Nope. That would be like one of them right there. John Favreau does not know how to write television. Period. And the other side to your answer, Critical Drinker, is basically like um, Jenna Ortega is now going to be an executive producer for season two, meaning she will have power and say and sway over things. And this is part of the reason why I think Henry Cavill probably shit can Danny Garcia is because of the shit deal that he got probably with uh, The Witcher being that he was not somebody in, in any, any place or power to be able to dictate anything. And so he's like, well, F this shit, I'm out. Same thing with all the shenanigans with Superman. But still, being said, like, that's when these actors, if they're like an executive producer on a show, that's when you know they have power. They can dictate whatever the hell they want, and they know everything that's going on. But if you're just mm. some day player or just some side character, you don't know Jack Squat. You don't even know if you're going to show up again. They don't tell you nothing, usually, unless they come to you and say, I want to do this with you. Let's let's work on this, which is very rare occurrence in these kind of situations. Nowadays, they used to rehearse and do stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, they used to actually ask the actors, what would you like to see your character do? Yeah, They don't do that anymore. No, because they're because it's a producer-driven market. And uh, well, we've I noticed... I do want to say, just, just casually, like, it's, not, it's not like the actors always know best, but the idea that no. they care, that's like, you need that. You, you, should, care, you should care about that. Well, yeah, you want them invested, exactly, yeah. 
you should definitely take their input, right? Like, you should oh. always give them a listen. Jenna's not. I saw the chat. If Jenna goes, Tim Burton is following. They are not going to get rid of. Uh, no way. They'll get rid of the writers first. And unlike with Henry Cavill, uh, Wednesday was the biggest show on Netflix, right? It was ever, ever, like bigger than Stranger Things. Bigger than all of them. Yep. Yep. So I imagine, uh, especially having learned. I mean, like Netflix is stupid. They let Henry walk and kept. Yeah. Uh, Lauren Hisrich, who couldn't adapt a fucking phone book, but uh, <laughs> there you go. Well, that's it's, the thing. I think they forget how big the Adams family is as a franchise. I mean, the, the animated movies were tossaways, but they forgot how big that movie was back in the day with Raul Julia and Angelica Houston. And the original show ran longer than the Munsters, and they were around longer than the Munsters. And and I think they underestimated the 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 power of this franchise and i've been saying it for years i don't know why they never tapped into it i even made a point that i don't think it was robocop 3 that killed orion it was the fact that orion sold adam's family to paramount if they would have kept going with the movie and finished it it could have saved orion <laughs> it might have you never know yeah they're, they're really good and the, the comics are good big old books because they were in the process of making the movie they're like well we need we need some Love money quick people. paramount bought the rights to the movie when they were in the process of making it by the way um gary probably mentioned string things for a second there uh oh, yeah. i don't know if you saw the tweet but uh i think it's the writers they like tweet out that you know they've been writing season five and man it's like season one and season four put together on steroids and oh. i was just like oh are we just casually admitting that season one and four are the best seasons <laughs> yes we are <laughs> Okay, they, are. they absolutely are. You can almost skip two and three at this point. Uh, I, I wouldn't watch them. Stranger again. Things almost reminds me of Lost at this point. It was like a big, huge like to do when it first came out, and then you quickly realize that they don't exactly have a plan here, do they? No, <laughs> and, uh, I, I think refocused. Yeah, it, it, took it a, almost became a, a victim of its own right. success of like trying to stretch yeah. its its premise out beyond what it was originally Which intended it's for. It's called nostalgia, and they, like it was done pretty well. It's fun, but it's like it's a freaking it's everything. For, it's an X Men story. It's 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 uh, Firestarter. It's Stephen King stuff. It's everything yeah. from the eighties. Yeah. Right? That's yeah, yeah I think uh, well, yeah that when it descended into farce in season three, I was just like, I'm so oh, done God, with that, this, dude. That no, yeah. that episode seven of season two, that that. that oh God! Control. Well, and speaking yeah. about actors who may know or may not know as much, I mean, the only show right now that I can think of that feels like it was actually planned and the actor actually did some good in it, or actors, I should say, is Cobra Kai, mm -hmm. because because uh, Ralph Macchio said, no, I'm not doing shit until you guys tell me exactly what your plan is. And I don't want to, we'll fix it later kind of thing or what, you know, we'll work on it later. He wanted to know the entire plan from the go, or he wasn't going to get involved because another, he's very protective of that part. Yeah. Yep. Another very successful show, probably not made for very much that was watched by a lot more people than watch the rings of power. Mm. And obviously that is very well planned. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know what is the what is the likelihood that they're actually going to complete five seasons of that? Zero. And and will it be five seasons of like one episode per season? <laughs> It'll basically go until they can pay it off cheaper than it is to actually produce it. <laughs> basically, at that point, when they can pay themselves out of the contract. Sorry, it would just be like people standing in rooms. Basically, no, it, it, <laughs> it'll be if it's five seasons. The last three seasons will be three episodes, two episodes, or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Season I mean. two is going to be season one again, but way less people watching it. And then they'll be like, "Oh fuck, we're in oh, serious watch trouble." Watch now. that happen to The Witcher. There are, there's already okay. So they're splitting season three. I'm pretty sure they're going to split season three because they split, um, they split Stranger Things. And and yeah. I think Netflix is just really because uh, of their pride, don't want to go away from the streaming, uh, from the binge bottle, uh, yeah. which is killing them. Um, and then look for Witcher if there's a season. I don't think there will be. I think if there's a season yeah. five, it'll just be season four split into two, and they'll call it season four and season five. That'll be. It. Yeah, yeah. like they, it's going to tank. They won't even bother shooting the following season because like, they... everyone's going to bail out knowing that Henry Cavill's leaving. That's how they finished out Doctor Who. They had commissioned um, another seat, just one more, and that they split into two, uh, and then they canceled the show because the show was canceled until RTD came back and saved it. So yeah, you were up. Yeah. The, the, the Witcher deserves, the Witcher deserves to die as a show. It's been awful. 
Like, I tried to be, like, a little bit positive about Season 2, but even then, I'm watching it just, like, frustrated. It feels like they had an open goal and they still managed to fumble it. Yeah. Like, all throughout. Like, yeah, they, they did the least entertaining, the least interesting take on every character. How does Lauren Hissrich still have a job? They, they just fired Victoria Alonso. It's like, she should not be working on The Witcher. She should have been fired the minute Henry Cavill had a problem. The only industry he should, where he, he should have just been made the showrunner. <laughs> like, well, he should have like done it Like the equivalent to like carpentry, you just make this awful table with like basically no wo all wobbly legs that falls over and breaks, and yet they still have their job. You're like, you're not even, <laughs> not even coming close to doing what you're supposed to do. How is I, this possible? I can't help but think of that shot of the writers' room from She-Hulk, and they thought yeah. that was just a really good idea. And you're <laughs> like. God damn. Uh, well, the She Hulk just reminds me of they like sitting there going, Oh, we don't even understand how to do like this uh, courtroom drama shit. It's like, Oh, you know, like back in the day when they used to bring somebody in who actually was a specialist in that kind of stuff, you know, you yeah. can refer to them, you know, maybe that would work. I mean, that anymore. I, I call, I, I may be like wildly optimistic, but I do genuinely think She Hulk will be seen by future generations as the, the lowest point of Marvel <laughs> on the screen. Start. Yep. Yeah, it's like right. that's the point where it truly hit a creative bedrock where it was just fucked. No, like there was no idea of what they were trying to do. Well, and Gary's right, like with the Witcher thing, like even five, six years ago, she would have been fired before Henry Cavill. Yeah. Like, what yeah. the hell is that? That is unheard of. They would, they would. Like, I was going to say they wouldn't fire her because she's female and so, yeah, like, she's that's just protected. why, exactly. Like, Victoria Alonso may have like opened the floodgates for like all this kind of stuff, like a oh. reckoning. If well, you it was will. it was very opportunistic to get rid of her. Like I said, there was a couple of angles you can take, a couple of layers for how you can benefit from losing Victoria Alonso right now. I've yeah. seen people talking about whether or not like the siege, the stuff of special effects people will improve now, and it's like <laughs> doubt it. No, they, like Disney was playing with uh, opening their own department, which that they they'll, they'll quickly forget. Because that costs a ton of money. That's why you use third-party corporations. And I know there's a pundit, and I'll use my air quotes again, for a YouTube pundit that rhymes with Pampia out there who tried to blame the third-party companies. They're they're bidding low. That's It's their fault. No, they have these things called contracts and parameters that they set up ahead of time. Yes, they want to be the lowest bidder, but they still like, hey, we need to know what to do. We need to simply know That's what, what I think they mean by guidelines, yeah. right? Yes, guidelines. And Marvel says gives them guidelines and then completely changes, not just a bit, like 90% of them. 90%. Uh, yeah. That's why people are like, whoa, okay, enough of this crap. So I've I've just been corrected by chat as well. You know, when I said that She Hulk is going to be seen as the creative low point of uh, of Marvel on film. <laughs> no, the Marvels is out in November. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, I stand corrected. <laughs> correct, Bjorn. <laughs> oh, that's going to be that, We already know what the what the setup is for this because uh, we heard about this test screen hey. that went supposedly horrible. Hey, Chris. It's Chris. Hey, what's going on? I want to be when I grow up. What's up? Bro? <laughs> hey, Tom. Hey, Paul. man. Drinker. Gary. Hi. Hey, hey, how's it going, man? Good to see you. All right. Yeah, see, what yeah, what I walk into? Was, are you just, uh, just about to tell everybody about the whole body swapping thing? That's what Miss Marvels, Mar the Marvels, is all about. Is each of them body swap? Oh, it's like yeah. Freaky Friday. That would be kind of that would make kind it of, but not well, exactly. I, they like actually switch places, not completely swap like their mentality, but like one minute one person's here, but then the other one will flip flop. They set it up in the last Miss Marvel episode, I guess. I Sorry. Thought, yeah, yeah, that bit when when Captain Marvel like zaps in. Yeah, that that wasn't her you know transforming into ms marvel or anything no, that was actually like captain human. marvel so they're swapping places i, I can't that's what wait I mean. to see yeah. brie larson's uh husband who sings that's one of the rumors i heard he's from a planet yeah. where everybody sings when they talk i don't know that's what i heard <laughs> wow. Uh, wow that sounds dumb it well it all sounds dumb it's so bad oh my god we'll I see you there <laughs> Just oh. to just to catch you up, Chris. Yeah, we've been talking a fair bit about Victoria Alonso getting fired. Um, Variety's basically confirmed that yeah, she she didn't leave of her own volition. She was fired from uh, from Marvel. Um, I'm kind of speculating about what that could mean for other people in other um, other divisions of Disney. Um, are are there really... are there initials KK? Because that would be great. That would that be would awesome. be good. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, I'm just, look, it's, first of all, it's shocking to me that someone who failed in Hollywood got fired. Normally they get promoted. So this is unusual yeah. and a step in the right direction. So I don't know. And also when you look at like what she was proud of and cause when did she start even like Gary, you would notice, cause I always watch those red carpets because that's when the stupidest comments are made and they're hilarious. Uh, when did she start showing up on the red carpet as someone who was a major influence on Marvel? It first, was, time ever, first time ever, I think everybody saw her was during the Nuke to Fridge interview where she said uh, X Men's outdated. Uh, right. Yeah. That's where she started like getting into, uh, but uh, I would say not sh shortly after that she started popping up, and then she was internet gold. We searched her out. We're like, what did Victoria say today? Mm -hmm. She was great for the clips on the video. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I was, you know, 2018, 2019. I don't know. Yeah. She, she reminds me of a cunty manager of a furniture store. I don't know yeah. how she got herself in a position <laughs> of, uh, you know, running so much of Marvel, but clearly she had an influence. I, I remember a lot. She, she was interviewed on uh, the red carpet for Eternals, the movie that saved lives, apparently. It did. Uh, it but, it, you know, I, I, I don't get how she was given so much power. Uh, Identity, with... politics, Chris. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it's the, well, the simplest well, wasn't it when Wasn't it when John Lasseter left or was, was ousted? And right. then suddenly Kevin Feige is like spread between too many different projects. Like someone needed to come up and replace yeah. him. And so Let's she took mind. that position. Kevin Feige also usurped the throne from Ike Perlmutter of Marvel, the man who ran yes. the company. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Really a board member. I mean, like a producer. He was essentially a producer at the time, was able to politic and get rid of a board member by, uh, you know, his association being a Trump supporter, uh, that he made up some bullshit about him being racist and sexist just because he said women action figures don't sell, which they don't. Uh, tried to perpetuate a lie that he didn't want to make a Black Panther film, which is absolutely not true because he tried to make a Black Panther film with Wesley Snipes. So, I mean, lover and and the guy was notoriously camera shy. He doesn't like pictures taken. He doesn't like take. He doesn't like giving interviews. So he was in and and Kevin Feige had all the power because he could go out to the people and talk and and knowing Perlmutter wouldn't say anything back. Uh, Perlmutter was a guy who saved Marvel basically. Yeah, and then sold it to Disney. And was yep. given a uh, a board a position on the board, and then taken out. And that's all. It's all in Iger's book, but like Gary's right, I'm sure that's Iger and Feige's version of the story. Uh huh. It is. <laughs> it is. Iger. Yeah. I just I just think the influence she had obviously was the path um, that Marvel took. But the when you look at everything from Phase Four, with the exception of Spider Man No Way Home, is there anything? that is has any anything worthwhile no not in phase no. four no it was yeah. it was w without exception just a big tidal wave of garbage between enjoyed... like the movies and the tv shows like it was just exhausting i enjoyed john walker and watching zemo blow up a bunch of uh what, what were they even called flag smashes flag smashers yeah yeah, yeah. so there, there was that, that was I, I, yeah seeing them die was quite satisfying <laughs> I, it's not what we were meant to feel, but the Guardians special, which was just an afterthought while they're filming Guardians three, that they just did in a couple days. Guardians three will be the only good thing in this phase, I could pretty much guarantee. But then that's yeah. just the swan song for James Gunn. Yep. Yep. And yeah, then well, they will cry. <laughs> will it? I mean, we'll see. Guardians three. I don't know now. <sighs> I don't know. Uh, now I'm. I don't have as much confidence. Well, what did you think of uh, Guardians one and two? I like the first one. The second one is a bit of a mess with some decent stuff in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but I don't think you could make, the point is this, do you think you could even make Guardians 1 now? No. No. Especially that's, with the Jackson Pollock joke. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no. Oh, is this revenue from movies? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God. Yes. That was <laughs> awful. I have a sound for that. <laughs> yes, um, Andre made this, and he uh, did us the favor of taking out all the Spider-Man movies. Um, and of course, yeah. if you would if you would see the other end of this spectrum, it was all the movies going up and 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 up, up to that two point over two point five billion dollar mark there. And then you yeah. see that huge drop. But of course, we'll give them Black Widow and Shang Chi because of COVID. But 
Eternals, we won't give them that excuse. Um, and then you're missing that big spike right there before Doctor Strange, and that's the only reason Doctor Strange probably went up much anyway. Yeah. And, and we're also missing the huge dive off at the end there for Ant-Man. So Eternals, uh, like, sure, you can make the COVID excuse for a Black Widow and sure, any yep. I'll, I'll I'll give you that one. But Eternals came out, what, a couple of weeks, yep. three weeks before <laughs> Spider-Man No Way Home? No yep. way. Can you use that excuse? No way in hell. Nope. To be honest with you, dude, though, like if Black Widow was to be releasing today, how do you think it would do? Worse, I think. I think yeah. worse, yeah. Yeah, I'm <laughs> worse. It's a bad. I had to go back and do that list, and man, I was reminded how bad that movie was. Yep, it's Woo! awful. It's a stinker. It yep. is a stinker. And I and I said before, that's an easy layup. You make a hard R spy thriller, uh, La Femme Nikita. You know, uh, Atomic Blonde, uh, Scarlett Johansson in her underwear at least 10 minutes. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, you're they would, they, yeah, Marvel would never, I know. ever fucking do like that. A crazy fight that turns and into a sex scene. Yeah. And, and it would cost you $50 million. Yep. $50 million. And you make it rated R and it makes what, $300, $400 million. And you make tons of profit and you, we get Scarlett Johansson in her underwear. Yeah, Everybody like if you have her at your disposal, why wouldn't you put her in her underwear as much as I don't, possible? I never really, yeah. like. It's not even. It's not even like, you know, they'll go with like the whole objectifying thing. Like, shut up, we'll get the guys shirtless too. Don't you worry about it. Everyone gets objectified. Woohoo! Well, <laughs> the, they they always make sure to fucking do that nowadays. It's like exactly. the guys That's always have to get their shirt off. It's like a fucking clause in their contract. But it's like the girls. Yeah, they get to cover up more and more with each passing movie. It's like, okay, I guess they they are not expected to be in shape or anything. The thing is, cool, yeah, it's know your fucking like, audience, man. There's loads of actresses who desperately want to be looked at. Like the idea that every one of them is like, nah, I don't want anyone to think uh, think of me as sexy. That's that's fucked up. I'm I'm here to act. You'd be like, come on, okay. Any of you who will be happily same with the guys as well. You know, acting isn't exactly a non ego profession. <laughs> Put it that way. I don't anyway. want to be objectified except when I'm half naked at the Academy Awards and my one hundred fifty thousand dollars string <laughs> that I'm wearing. Well, I mean, shit, man. Like, if I'd like, if I'd uh, done a movie like this and I'd been assigned a personal trainer and had to spend like six months killing myself in the gym, yeah, yeah, yeah I would definitely want to get my shirt off. It's well, like I, I want to at least show off what I've done here. Who wants to take a bet as to whether or not Hugh Jackman will be shirtless in Deadpool three at some point? Uh, he'll uh, he'll do sure. it. I'm not going to take, yeah. that, bet. Gonna take that bet. The, the no. dude's the dude's bulking up again for this role. I was going to say like, like the amount of effort cool, he's like, in. Because you know this is kind of like a comedy goofy version of Wolverine, but like he's still taking it seriously enough, and he cares enough about the character. Like he's he's gonna he's gonna put in the hours at the gym to do this. Yeah, I've seen I've already seen before and afters of him starting up training. He's already done significant progress. It's like this damn. is supposed to be a rated R film. We'll see. We'll see. It, well, it was greenlit as <laughs> such. Yeah, that's the one of the only films that Chapek got greenlit in his tenure, really, was Deadpool 3. Because Bob Iger and, and Ryan Reynolds could not see eye to eye. I loved in the article I covered, they said Bob Iger's been in charge of Disney since 2005. <laughs> they just didn't even mention Which Bob, Bob Iger. <laughs> I was like, oh, I said the quiet I mean, it's true. Now. Like, yeah, Bob was yeah. still Bob Iger Bob was got still to run the charge. company for seven months. Yeah. Um... Yeah, the other the other thing I was going to talk about a little bit is these these upheavals are not confined solely to Marvel. The the problems extend to Lucasfilm as well, and chiefly around the Acolyte, which you know, as a show, I'm sure we're all excited to see. Can't wait. Um, but there there's legal problems associated with that. Oh, no. um, and I wasn't I wasn't fully across this until just recently. But uh, yeah, so apparently one of the producers, Karen McCarthy, um, she had accepted a deal to do. Um, the acolyte, um, she had to then turn down other offers from Netflix. I think, which which did her out of like a million dollars at least. Like they were they were big deals, uh, and then she was unceremoniously booted off the acolyte. And so she's now suing uh, Lucasfilm for um, you know lost earnings because she had to turn down all this other stuff. And so what this has done is shone a giant spotlight on what the status of the acolyte is. Um, whether it's actually in production, whether it's a fully fledged show, or whether it's just going to be like a uh, almost like a test bed um, to try and get like proper funding for it, because um, you would have assumed rather than this go to like an expensive and very public and embarrassing legal battle that they would have just paid her off behind the scenes, like rather than deal with all this. 
And the fact that they haven't been able to is kind of telling about what actual budget this show has got available to it and whether it's even a real thing. And I think Tom Midnight's Edge has just covered this like the, in the past couple of days. Um, this is going to unearth a lot of potentially really embarrassing um, realities about what the Acolyte is and, and, and what Lucasfilm has actually got in the pipeline for these shows. Yeah, actually, it was last week, I think it was. But yeah, still, Sorry, it's not yeah. that. Yeah, not that old anyway, either way. But basically, this is one of those cases where it would probably just go away and she wouldn't get jack squat because, as our friend Robert Meyer Burnett likes to point out, you don't get what you deserve in Hollywood. You get what you negotiate, right? And if she didn't have anything signed in paper, there's not much she can do. But what she does have in her favor is the email trail. If she has anything where they actually legitimately asked her to come out, um, because she is saying in her case that she was um, she was promised room and board, basically, um, moving expenses, and plus whatever her salary was going to be on top of it all. Um, and she had moved, I guess, and turned down a huge offer from Apple, I think it was. And, and so her argument is that she would be basically uh, working for the show, and then they just decided they didn't want to work with her anymore. And they're like, adios, see you later. And she's like, well what are you going to at least reimburse me for what I have done? And they gave her $5,000 and we went and we looked into it. And that was basically the amount that she had had to have spent to get the place that she had moved into. Cause she had mm -hmm. said something about, she had rented an apartment that was uh 250,000 or $2,500 for the, the month. So she probably had to have come up with a security deposit and the first month's rent. And that's probably the only amount that Disney could say that they would be like, yeah, okay, fine. We'll give you that as a pettance or pittance or whatever, you know. And in that, they probably guilted themselves. Like, that's the only reason why I feel like this might have some weight in court is because as long as she didn't have any contracts, Disney can just sit there and say, we never signed shit. You know, like, there's nothing you can do. We had no deal. You know, you were working for whom? Not us. But since they gave her that $5,000, that is probably going to be something that her, her lawyers are going to really use as a sticking point as... That was basically like some kind of contract was at least agreed upon there. So she might have some grounds for this. Um, but is, again, is the, like, yeah. Well, I was going to say, is the bigger issue not what could potentially come out about, like, what's uh, what Lucasfilm are actually producing uh, in terms of TV shows? Because I think the question, Mark, was around, well, what is the Acolyte even going to be? Like, it, do you even have funding to make this into a proper show? Or are you still trying to pitch it to Disney to get the actual... In the investment that you need because like the, that's what they do with these shows quite often isn't it like rather than make a pilot or make a you know a whole season they'll they'll almost produce like a sizzle reel of like potential footage you know this is what the show could look like you know we we've been given like a million dollars to to produce this and if you guys like it we can then you know we can negotiate like fully funding uh to to move forward into production and it based on all this it kind of seems like that's that's where they were at it's not it's not a show in the normal sense it's still trying to get like even commissioned yeah yeah i mean as far as that goes like i'm sure they don't want any kind of discovery getting out as far as just publicly for anything when it comes to behind the scenes with lucasfilm um as far as like the amount of money for the show that's the thing we've heard that kathleen kennedy can green light tv shows until she's blue in the face what she can't do is green light a movie without getting it past the upper management. Um, but at the same time, you're right. It sounds like they they have a funding issue, but from as best as we can tell, the show's already deep into shooting. So on that respect, the show's already... So it is happening. In the process, yeah, of. But uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, it's one of those things where I don't know what kind of money she was offered for her to turn down the offer she got at at apple but yeah that's where i can't understand how big of a show this could really be i've seen a couple behind the scenes photos but nothing makes me feel like it's you know anything huge or it could just be like you said a sizzle reel they're putting together right now or just a pilot episode we don't even know they might say oh they shot a pilot but we decided not to pick it up that could happen well, too but i don't know i mean just thinking about like the shows that they've made so far you know the uh book of boba fett disaster like garbage uh, Obi Wan Kenobi, garbage. Like people were laughing at it by the end. The Mandalorian, first season, well, it was all right, I guess. It kind of got the ball rolling. 
season two, fair enough. Season three is falling off a cliff. Like people have lost interest in that. So if you can't even get interest from a show with Obi Wan Kenobi in it, if you can't get interest from The Mandalorian anymore, like your flagship show, what chance have you got with something like The Acolyte? Like that is just going to be like, it's going to be like the Batwoman of of Star Wars shows. Nobody's going to give a shit about it. It feels very similar to the state of uh, Marvel shows. It's like if you're having trouble grabbing people for your main stars, what hope does fucking Harkness have? Well, you know? I mean, at least at least Marvel's got the movies. Like as as much as they've been kind of underperforming, they at least generate some kind of press, some kind of interest. Star Wars doesn't even have that. They they've got no movies in the pipeline. The, all they have is their TV shows, and no one cares about them anymore either. Like they have they've faded into irrelevancy at this point. But what what is the story of the acolyte that must be told that will engage me enough to, women. Su- to subscribe to Disney Plus <laughs> because I have to see it? LGBT it, it, plus. Yeah, it's it's made by an intersectional feminist, and so yeah. it's intersectional feminism because like they have literally got zero imagination, and they a can only write about what they the do. Jedi. Yeah, it will be a girl inventing the Jedi. Yeah, it's 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 just I'll I'll tell you this that leaning into that is not a profitable pathway. And look, nope. I come I I come from uh, indie film. I see a lot of indie film. I see a lot of movies. We have a category for it. When they come into film threat, we call it um, a, a, a bunch of this is a documentary about a bunch of lesbian wheat farmers. That is, like, but it, but those movies never make money. Movies with those themes, and and when you see that like Willow was recently canceled, I'm shocked that they well, would move forward with something that's not a sure thing. You know, it would be a sure thing. You could make a show. Hear me out. I, I'm I'm going crazy right now. Oh my god. Let's do a show. Let's do a show called The Adventures of Luke Skywalker. From the Journal of the Wills, where we'll find out exactly what the fuck the wills are, because yeah. we've never found out officially. Well, that George had that in his in his uh, treatment for like the sequel trilogy. The wills were going to be a big part of that. Look, to be, never the story, got to see Star it. Wars is the story of Luke Skywalker. When you talk about what story is, story is character. All of these little offshoot things, the Boba Fett show, okay, Boba Fett was mildly interesting as a side character. His most interesting, the most interesting aspect of Boba Fett was the fact that we didn't know anything about him. And as soon as we learned everything about him, he became vastly uninteresting. So so the act, all these sort of offshoot shows are just hot garbage from the get-go because they're not connected to the thing that is the soul of Star Wars. I think the the offshoot <laughs> shows could have worked if the movies were strong. If and they the did sequel put Luke trilogy into shows, somehow, true. Remember, Luke. Did yeah, if, up if the shows. if the sequel movies had been awesome and they carried on the legacy of Star Wars, I think you could have done all kinds of offshoots from that because the uni- the core of the universe would be strong, and you, you could can have build on that. Done but the they- crazy thing called adapt the EU. The yeah. Book. yeah. That were out there that they shit canned almost immediately. That was the only chance they had because George didn't write lore. He didn't have all this. You know why Tolkien is the fucking goat is because he invent he made this fabric, this whole universe, this whole world, this whole secondary world. Uh, wow! And before he made Lord of the Rings, before the Hobbit was even incorporated into it, like he had this vast texture out there that you can like that, that gave it depth. George Lucas had a great idea, a great idea that needed to be filled in. And uh, as little kids, we filled in the imagination. We got a little Bantha tracks when we were uh, f- uh, members of the fan clubs. And we got little snippets of, oh, man, you, whoa, whoa, could Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader fought over lava? And like, that's that's <laughs> all we knew at the time. So we filled it in. Now, George, to his credit, gave it to other authors later on to fill in much later. And they did a very good job. And Kathleen Kennedy shit canned it. That was the only chance they ever had. But no, according to Kathleen Kennedy, there's no Very books ruined. and there's no expanded universe. None. Don't exist. And none. Don't how, how has she still got a fucking job? Like it's baffling. No, I know. And don't underestimate the the power of the patheticness. Like the idea of like focusing more so on Luke, like Skinwalker Luke, what they've got in uh, that turned up in Boba Fett. If he turns up again in Mando, which I wouldn't be surprised if he did, it's still the best name. Skinwalker he's, Luke is it's, so it's, 
Well, it's what they do with any of the characters when they come yeah. back. You know, cause technically speaking, this this is this goes as far back as what Grand Moff Tarkin in Rogue One. Yeah, but it's like yeah. that uh, that advice to like you know focus on the characters people like. It's like yeah, we gotta be careful because you know <laughs> <laughs> sometimes they'll do right. stuff that you're like, holy fuck, never ever do a character we like ever again. Ruin your own characters, and that's right. I guess what Mando's is right now. Hey, Chris. To be fair, there are. Uh, there are films, short films about lesbian wheat farmers that get millions of views. Millions and oh, millions I know that. of views. Okay, I know that channel. Yeah. Is it Red Tube? Their website. Is that the channel is that Pornhub. You name it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. About uh, twenty minutes I... long. <laughs> <laughs> Just the right yeah. amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would say in other other sad news, uh, Ryan Johnson's trilogy has been officially cancelled. Oh, Much no. to everyone's shock. No. Is it official it's yet, from, or is it still from Screen no, Rant's report? They said they've got yeah. an informer, and that's it. The, it's not quite official yet. I mean, I, it, it's I, kind I, of I, like, you know, it's like telling us that Kennedy's dead or something. Yeah. You know? Well, this <laughs> like, reminds me more know. of Star Trek Four, right? Like, every few months we get an announcement that we are getting another Star Trek Four, and then the, another director, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then three months, three to six months later, that director leaves. Yep. <laughs> And then two, three week, months after that, we get another announcement. It's just an ongoing thing. Just like they keep, a it reminds me because they keep asking him every single time, are you still doing the trilogy? And that's when it stirs it up. And he's just like, oh yeah, I still want to make Star Wars. It's kind of like every time that, you know, Alicia Silverstone happens to be out somewhere and they give that poor girl this disillusion that she has a career still and ask her if she'd ever play Batgirl again. Oh my it's God. <laughs> Right, Aww. I mean, dude, like it, just because of the weirdness, they had a huge opportunity. Okay, back in the day, Peter Jackson wanted to to direct a Doctor Who episode. Was begging to do it, said he'd do it for a Dalek, and they wouldn't let him do it. And then Quentin Tarantino says he wants to direct a Star Trek movie. It's like, yeah, I mean, like <laughs> just the weirdness. I want to see that. Uh, uh, I mean, you, you, well, can't, you can't make it happen. Yeah, I just wish they would be. I would just wish they would have the balls to just axe things officially. It's like you know the Lindelof Star Wars movie that's not happening. The the Dan and Dave Star Wars movie. Oh, now like, Stephen, I, Stephen Knight is now Stephen writing. Knight's taking over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, <laughs> which is better. It's better. That's a better writer. But yeah, like the, the you know the um, Ryan Johnson trilogy. Like just announce that it's it's done. Like that's not happening. Like, be clear about what you're planning to do because it's like just announcing things isn't the same as making things. I would argue you know, it became like busy work. Became the closest to official when he announced he was making two Knives Out films and a TV show. As soon as that was happening, exactly. like, you can't make Star Wars films now. There's no way. No. Yeah. Well, we got a like... celebration coming up. They got to announce something, right? Are we going to believe? Go to announce something. Are you, are you going to? Yeah. Are any of the things they announce even going to happen? But if if Tarantino ever did a Star Trek, it should be set in the Jeffrey Hunter like oh. time where like, Jeffrey Hunter was the captain with the velour tops. Oh. And, and it's like just raw and and very sexual and like incredibly violent. That's what I want to see. Oh yeah. Is that old well, school the Star Trek? Being the Tarantino head, I'll tell you right now, I, and I could be wrong, but I know from what I remember reading and hearing of what he said, and I got a great clip of what he said about J.J. Abrams with Price. Uh -huh. Oh, I remember that. But, <laughs> but like, I remember. But like, I knowing him, people would expect him to be, you know, have Samuel Jackson on the ship going like, you know, f word this and mother f that, whatever. But like, no, he would make something that feels like a Star Trek movie, like it, like well, uh, okay. <laughs> that feels like it was shot in the seventies, exactly yeah, yeah. in the sixties or seventies. That's what he would do. He he would not he would subvert your expectations in a good way by go you go in and go holy shit I feel like I'm watching a Star Trek episode, what the hell happened? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, I'm oh. fine with having Samuel Jackson say motherfucker on the Star Trek trip. He would but you buy the motherfucking yeah. torpedoes. <laughs> yeah. He'd be like the Scotty rule. I can't fucking do it, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking engines are all over the place. There's snakes <laughs> in this motherfucking ship. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's what you would need to just reinvigorate it somehow, just to do something completely off the wall like that, something totally different. I don't know. I mean, it's just... He actually wanted to do a take on the one episode with the gangsters, is what he wanted to actually do, I guess. Yeah. That's... I'm trying to remember the name of the episode, but it's, uh, yeah. It's it... the same for Star Wars earlier. I was just, like, just give it out. Give the IP out to a bunch of creatives now. You killed it, so let's see if anyone else can make something of it. Well, I mean... The question, I guess, comes in, like, what could you do to try and salvage it? 
would it just be like we need to let it rest for a few years we need to like let some of the the fan resentment die down and then come back with a completely new take on it uh or do we just plow ahead and just gradually try to improve what we put out like that, what's the solution oof. the corporate structure is to just get out, as much blood out of the turnip as you can get and uh this and not give a shit there used to be a time when disney would vault their stuff and people would give up on stuff dude spider-man 3 directed by sam raimi was the at the time the highest grossing spider-man film yep and it ended the franchise yeah, they, they went ahead with the Spider-Man Four, gave Toby a bunch of money up front, guaranteed, and still canceled it. So uh, th there was a time where they would recognize that they would they would listen to the audience. Uh, we're past those days now. Now they're forcing stuff on us, and it's just content to them. So I no, I don't think we can have franchises like that anymore. I don't think we can have nice things anymore. Yeah, no, a lot of people said like, like Marvel should have taken a break. It's like that was never going to happen. No, no. It would just never they should have, but you, no. no. It's never gonna happen. No, they should just reboot, but no, it's and I mean by reboot, like just do the 007 thing, just recast yeah. these things, move on, continue on. Kind of, you know, it used to be when we'd get a sequel or something like that back in the day, it didn't always necessarily line up with the original, right? We didn't always get the same actors back and stuff like that. I never had such a problem with that. Yeah. They they were no, supposed I... to they were supposed to actually recast after yeah. Endgame. We talked about this, right? I, Tom, I'm sure I talked to you about it. I was Would against you, it then, but I, I've moved to the other side now, Chris. Yeah. It, it was an idea that was discussed where uh, they it's something something along the lines where um, Captain Marvel had to go back in time and pluck younger versions of all the Avengers yep. because they were defeated. And it was going to be an opportunity for Marvel to recast. And it was going to be like just sort of a button on the end that you just get the younger versions of all the they Avengers. They did that with Tony Stark in the comics. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. something that was discussed but didn't happen. But I'm not even talking about that. I'm just talking about just like they did with um, Val Kilmer for Michael Keaton, right? Just just continue right. on. Like there's nothing that yeah. says you can't. I don't well, I mean they it. they've recast already a bunch of characters within the right. MCU. I mean, is, you know, how many how many times is like Scott Lang's daughter Except been for the recast, one they should have, Black Panther, right? Sorry. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah. What does anyone care about the new Captain America for? That's being no. right now. Yes. No. You mean Captain also, Falcon? No. Just Captain okay. Black Falcon. From a practical standpoint, can I ask a dumb question about Captain America? Gary, because you're here and because we have the knowledge of the chat. Um, okay, Captain America's costume, what I love that they did with Steve Rogers' costume is it felt practical. It mm -hmm. felt like he took a show costume, he made it practical, and it like had real world. The costume they have for the Falcon version of the Captain America is the dumbest design. He looks like a cross country skier. <laughs> exactly. He yeah. looks like the ice capades. It's so yeah. bad. It's not even practical. Like his Marvel, head is exposed. No, yeah, why? No, your <laughs> power is wings. You have wings that come out, and, and then you're supposed to throw a shield that, like, they're going to get in the way. It's yeah, that doesn't feel like it synergizes at all. The wind and, and the shield. shield being thrown by a regular hu human means dick. Like it means well, not only that. Yeah, it just strikes true. me as dumb because they have this incessant need to make other characters other characters, right? Like this whole mantle idea with the whole goes back to Victoria Alonso, right? Falcon was already Falcon. What was wrong with that? You got a new Falcon this... now. It's a good. Character. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's fucking stupid, and then it's the it same thing. They... No, they even it, did the it, same it, thing it, to Modok in the goddamn uh, Ant Man movie or whatever it was. It's like, why couldn't he just be Modok? Like, um, the thing is, I don't think Falcon Anthony Mackie's really behind this either. Like, I don't think he's keen on being no. Captain Falcon America. Becoming Captain America is the best example of the bigotry of low expectations. It is, well, Falcon wasn't good enough, even though he was a seminal black character, one of the earliest right. black characters in comics, and we have to give him the white man's clothes. Like that's exactly what Eric July talks about all the time. It's yep. total bigotry. That's what it is. It's stupid. Absolutely. Like well, you could just had Falcon lead the damn Avengers. It'd have been fine. We were fine with that. Anthony Mackie as Falcon. Yeah, I, I think it plays. I think it plays as well into the hands of people who I'm sure they take a kind of malicious pleasure in going. We got another one. You know, we took down another straight white male yep. hero and we replaced him with something different. Like and that's a that's a a thumb in the eye for for all you guys who are, who just you know who want to respect the characters and keep them as they are. It's like yeah, we we took another one from why, you. 
every time they do that, I just retweet it back with the Monty Python quote. We already got one. <laughs> yeah. I don't need yeah. another one. I already we got already one. Have one. <laughs> no, I told them we already yeah, got one. Second time. Uh, I told them that's had one. That's that's the mentality now, though. I think yeah, it's it's the same when they they take a character from the comics and they turn them gay or they race swap them or whatever. Again, it's this just that same joy uh, in changing something that they know is going to piss people off. Yep. Kate said it in the so chat. It's, it's a scalp. That's all yeah. it is. That's all it is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And now we got a scalp. Victoria Alonso. <laughs> oh. Ordered some more. Yeah. The first of many, perhaps. Yep. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see where this goes over the next few weeks. Like it does it feels like there'll be more. I don't know, Tom, if uh if you've heard anything or, or if this Nothing is likely solid. to be the start of something else. But you gotta imagine there's gotta be a big head rolling somewhere in the Lucasfilm department too, right? Um you, there's gotta be. If they know, if they're pissed off how Marvel's performing, they must be livid at Lucasfilm. It's got to be chicken to the Star Wars situation. I don't know what's going on. Nobody does. Well, it's got to be a situation where somebody's going to have to roll. It's not going to be Kathleen Kennedy. We all know why. Let's be real. The reason she keeps getting to do what she gets to do is because of ET, because of Back to the Future, because of all these other movies that she's had a part of in her entire life. But we all know. They all know. But because she's basically royalty in Hollywood. I've said it a million times before. She could set the kingdom on freaking fire and shit yeah. on the steps in the front of it and call everybody, every name in the book. And she would still be able to continue to do what she's doing because she's Kathleen freaking Kennedy. She's in the Guinness book of world records. And until they just, she decides, I should say that she's done. There's nothing that's going to be done there. Victoria Alonso, on the other hand, she may have been acting like she was Kathleen Kennedy, but she learned pretty damn quick that she ain't no Kathleen Kennedy. That's the thing. But it's going to be it's going to be very interesting to see what happens to Kathleen Kennedy's reputation when Indy Five comes out, mm -hmm. because they can only delay that movie so many times before yeah. they finally have to release it, and it's going to bomb spectacularly. How do we know? Also, not to conspiracy theory this, but oh, you know that. Um, Kathleen Kennedy has a twin sister, right? Yeah, I've heard that, yeah. <laughs> is it possible that Kathleen Kennedy, who is a brilliant producer, just sort of took the money, walked away, <laughs> and put her sister in charge, who's the idiot? Like you know, Paul like McCartney thing? Prince and the Pauper kind of situation? Like, how do we know Maybe. that a, an utter moron is, is not running Star Wars right now? Maybe. Well, one is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Don't know if she became I, a moron, always was a moron. And she just I think it just, it just, it just say that, Chris, but I hear all the stories about her back in the day. It's like, no, no, no. She just was lucky enough to have hitched her wagon to Steven Spielberg and all these other people. Frank Marshall. You know, Frank Marshall, her, her husband of all people, you know. And that's the thing is I would love to believe that she went off on that spaceship that took the original Michael Jackson and Tim Burton back in the day and replaced them with aliens. But I don't <laughs> think that's the case. I think it just shows, though, like there's a big difference between being a producer on a Steven Spielberg movie where you kind of have to assume that like most of the work's going to get done by him anyway, uh, and running an entire studio where you have to oversee like a, a dozen different productions at the same time. That's a very different gig. Mm -hmm. And you might be good at one, but not good at the other. Absolutely. So I, could, it, I think it's just she's an example of someone who's been promoted way beyond their abilities. Yep. Well not only that, she's never had it hard, right? She's never actually had to produce anything in her life. I mean, sure, she knows people, and that's what's made it so easy. I've pointed out before. She can call, you know, the mayor of New York and say, hey, can I get the Brooklyn Bridge shut down for a day? Steven wants to do the shot. And they'd be like, oh, no problem, Miss Kennedy. You know, it's not like she's some no-name producer. She gets everything handed to her, but she's never had a hard time. She got in while the getting was good, when Steven was on his ramp up. So I, I imagine producing E.T. was, let's put it this way, producing E.T. was so easy that she had the time to take Steven aside and said, you're treating everybody like shit, Steven. Because he was being, I guess, a little bit, little bit of a asshole on the set and pushing people a little too hard. And that's the most she did on that set. Like, <laughs> what else did she do besides get coffee? Nothing. No. Oh, I wasn't there. So well, no, I no. Apparently, I, I, I dated a girl once who was her secretary. She said that she was very businesslike, very professional, and her skill, which everyone was amazed by, was her, she was very good at scheduling. 
She's a secretary. Oh, She's a glorified I mean, fucking secretary. I mean, that's a nice skill to have. I'm just not sure how, not, how useful a, it is to run a studio. She was but, not creative, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Right, she's yeah. Not creative, and she's not very good at retaining creatives. They, she, the, the Lucasfilm leaks them like a sieve. Uh, and it's it, like even even the shills are are starting to question her. Like many years too late now that Star Wars is a completely dead brand, they're starting to turn things around. Well, too bad. Uh, but like it, you know, it was her decision to to make Galaxy's Edge new. Like that was her. She came in and nixed what they were going to do with Galaxy's Edge, which was going to have a Star Wars land. She's like, nobody cares what the fifty year olds want. I got audio of the guy saying that the guy going design the park. Yeah, we got a call from Kathleen Kennedy and had to scrap it all. Yeah, Scrapped it's, it's all heartbreaking actually that. when you see the original plans for that. Like it would have been proper classic Star Wars. Yeah, all right, gone. Right. Remember the Star oh, Trek experience, Chris, in Las Vegas? Yes, I went to it many times. Many even times. What was even great about was the the museum as you walked through to wait. Yes. Oh. Sparks Bar. Oh, uh, the bar was great. The warp core was reach. awesome. Oh, the merch there was amazing. My wife got hammered with some uh Cardathian coolers and uh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh the Star Trek experience was great. Even that Star Trek hotel that they were that they were going to make. I know. Uh, oh my god, the designs for that are insane. So, was that in Vegas? Sorry. In Vegas, they were gonna make oh, yeah, they, they wouldn't do like an enterprise, weren't they? There, yeah, like a full size one. Full size enterprise, but I guess part of the reason they ended up not doing it because I talked to some people who work at Paramount. They were saying that they didn't want this the hotel to fail. Then there would be this mm. broken down enterprise in the middle of Vegas that would have to be torn down. So it was mm. really over like image, not over money, which is Damn. bizarre. And, and the sign for uh for um the Star Trek experience is still on the side of the hotel, it's still there to this day. I was gonna say, wasn't wow. that part? Of, I can imagine after that stuff, yeah. Um, there's a good uh, tweet that Tom had put up earlier. Actually, this is the list of like p successful productions that S Disney have actually managed to put out for Star Wars, and then the, the stuff that's been fucked. And, yeah, like, wow, it's Crazy. incredible. Because I've been saying this for a while. I've been saying this is what I mean when KK has fired more people than she's hired. And some people would laugh at me and say that doesn't even make any sense. It's like yes, it does. It means that she has fired more people than actual productions that have actually happened. Because the only two movies that went off without a hitch were The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. None of the other ones did. As we know, Gareth Edwards was let go from Rogue One and Tony Gilroy came in and reshot it. Josh Trank was attached to a Boba Fett project at one time. Lord Miller shot for 88 days per Clint Howard, and Gary can back me up on that one because he was in the room with him. Uh, yeah. Colin Trevorrow was supposed to do the third Star Wars film. We know how that one wound up. J.J. Abrams is still shooting it right now. Stephen Daldry uh, was supposed to work on Obi-Wan, didn't. James Mangold was supposed to do a Boba Fett project and didn't. Benioff and Weiss were supposed to do a trilogy and didn't. We know what happened to the Patty Jenkins thing. That was dead before they even announced it. J.D. Dillard, he was the other one who was supposed to make a project. Kevin Feige and Waldron's project is dead. And I think the reason that project got canceled leads directly into why Alonzo was fired is because... Iger probably told him, we're getting rid of her, so you need to get your ass over here and quit worrying about Star Wars. You got this other stuff to deal with. And the Damon and Lindelof project is pretty much dead, because let's be real, the director is just a director for hire. Whatever movie they're making now with this new writer, it sure as hell probably wasn't going to be what Damon Lindelof was going to make in the first place. So, I mean, at this point, that's that many dead projects. And if you want to throw in Ryan Johnson's trilogy in where you're at it, go sure. for it. Yeah. And who's directing, who was direct, that, well, She's still directing that project. That That's what I mean. Is from uh, Miss Marvel as a Miss Marvel director. That's what I mean. It'll probably still happen, but considering Lindelof's no longer writing it, unless he gets some kind of credit for story by, then it's a completely new project, yeah. basically. Yep. Mm. We'll, and we'll see if it happens. I, I, I don't trust Lucasfilm. I don't think anybody does. Like you can't just like be this big corporate for one. They, they used these announcements and you know, Tom and everybody who's familiar with star Trek, they used it as, as a marketing ploy. Yep. So to, to help the, the reason Rianne Johnson's trilogy was announced to try to bolster their confidence, uh, their public confidence, the optics of fucking the last Jedi to try to take away from some of the division that was going on with the fandom. It's the only reason they announced it. They had no intention of ever, ever making that thing. They just wanted to try to, to to you know put out the fire a little bit which didn't work star trek does that crap all the time and somehow they trick paramount into actually making a couple of them but uh no, marvel's been doing it how like marvel's been able to cover up how many projects they've covered they've 
either changed the title of or outright scrapped. And uh, God, their schedule's gotten so messy lately. Uh, now, now nothing's coming out. Now everything yeah. is coming soon uh, yeah. for, for Marvels and, <laughs> and Guardians. So, like, Star Wars is a, is a hot mess, and it can't be fixed because, as Chris said, Star Wars is Han, Luke, and Leia. Essentially, Star Wars is Han, Luke, and Leia. And um, without that you didn't build any of the new characters enough to get to the general public not just to the hardcore fans how, how long is it going to be though until we have ai generated han luke and leia going on further not adventures long. not long because you've already got like ai generated luke it's just like a cgi face like they digitized his voice Ugh. like and yeah it still sounds very robotic and and kind of flat and monotone but like give that a few more years why can't we just get like impressionists why do they have to use like the horrible robot? Yeah, they, they because the robot's cheaper. Somebody, yeah, the robot's cheaper. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah that you couldn't, you totally couldn't tell with uh, with uh, Darth Vader's voice and Obi Wan. By the way, yeah, no, this is totally becoming a thing, guys. Because I talked to Gary Tunnicliffe about this a while back, uh, and a few other people about this. This is like these actors are signing off their likeness rights now, and they're getting themselves scanned every few years. <laughs> I shit you not. Luke is not more. Yeah, yeah no, no kidding. Dad's dead. Yeah, imagine, more getting shit now than man. imagine getting residuals off of shit you're not even, you don't have to be. Yeah. In. You just got your yeah, body. So here. they don't want to pay another actor. They already have to pay, pay a stand in as it is. Yeah. So if they could just have an AI do the acting for them, then they're going to do that. But like, that's what they're doing. And you're right. They're getting to that point where this stuff is getting to where we can't even tell if it is or not. Because I've seen some clips. They've got this new technology where you can watch a movie in a foreign language. And like you got Jack Nicholson saying, you know, you want the truth, you can't handle the truth. Well, it actually sounds like his voice, but he's saying it in Spanish and the lips are moving with it and everything. So they have this technology now where it sounds like it's Jack Nicholson. They don't even have to have another voice actor come in and do anything. So that's yeah, it's, 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 the, the future will. is going to be AI generated scripts from tra Chat well, GPT. The, the and then like scripts are going to be entertaining the robots that are going to kill us all. So. <laughs> right. It is interesting though. Like, do you guys remember when Mando started? It gained a shit ton of goodwill from a lot of Star Wars fans, and when they introduced like volume, I think as a significant tool. It was in Mando season two's first episode. They were shown behind the scenes, like, look at this amazing, and everyone's like, wow, this looks way better than green screen and stuff. And I was just saying to myself, like, volume's well, reputation is tanked. The um, the Mando's reputation is already tanked. And how long does this take? Like a year, two years? Even Luke, when he appeared at the end of season two, people loved it. When he appeared in Boba Fett, everyone was like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> what is this? It's like the turnover for these pieces of technology. They just like, they have no staying power compared to a... Well, I know, but world. like, I guess individually they might fail, but like they, they represent a, a general trend. And, you know, each iteration is going to get better. That's oh, the cool. well, problem. What I'm suggesting like, you know, you the... could the end of season two is still liked as far as i know right like the the that bit with luke but like well, you know <laughs> kind of undid it in both that quite a bit didn't they yeah i guess what i'm saying is in a sense that was the, the boba fett one's newer and it did worse like people yeah yeah, yeah. liked it less and well, this is doing worse than boba fett by the way mandalorian is doing worse than boba fett real quick hilarious. i, I... I spoke to a director in Hollywood who regularly uses the volume for commercial work. He said that the volume has made directors lazy mm -hmm. and less competent yeah. directors just don't even know how to use the tool because we have so many people now in Hollywood who are being uplifted into positions they're not quite ready for. So yeah, well, the volume is, is basically uh, turned a lot of would-be filmmakers into shitty filmmakers well cgi already made a lot of them lazy because this was in a documentary you had recommended to me and i can't remember the name of it but it was about special mm -hmm. effects um and this one guy was talking about how he he was sitting there listening to the director in the first ad argue over how much it was going to cost to do this shot because they had to replace the the cgi out the air duct in this shot because <laughs> it was too modern it was supposed to be uh like in the 1930s or 40s so as they were arguing the special effects guy walks over, turns the camera 30 degrees, turns all the lights 30 degrees. He goes, there, I just saved you guys 10,000 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, you're right, though. That's right that's the mindset, though. Once you fall into that that way of thinking of, like, well, it all has to be fixed in post. You know, it has to be CGI'd out or whatever. I imagine it just becomes very difficult to get beyond it because that's the way you see yeah. filmmaking then. Uh -huh. It all has to be fixed in post. 
And I guess part of it is like no matter how good tools get, you'll always get incompetent users. Uh, as time well, goes yeah. on, so. Well, look at look at Marvel and. Stuff, <laughs> yeah. I guess. Uh, speaking of incompetent bullshit, like uh, I know that Chris, you've you've seen Dungeons and Dragons. No. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is it as good as we all hope? And are the male leads truly emasculated, or is it just a facade? Uh, buckle up. First of all, it's exactly as advertised in the trailer. I mean, there are parts of, I can't I can't deny that there are parts of it that are kind of a fun adventure romp. But in terms of the emasculated male, uh, I'm going to ruin a scene for you. I'm going to ruin one scene that basically is going to tell you everything you need to know about this movie. So Michelle Rodriguez's characters, she's this sort of badass warrior. I think she's completely modeled off of Gina Carano. They physically made her through her wardrobe more intimidating to look a lot like Cara Dune. It just, that's just having seen the film. That's what she looks like. So she, they go off on, on this and there's some sort of fun things in the beginning with um, sort of a different way of telling the story. People are comparing it to um, uh, Princess Bride. It's not like that at all, but it is sort of a weird way of telling the story. But Michelle Rodriguez's character has an, a husband that she used to be with and goes to revisit. And it's played by Bradley Cooper. And Bradley Cooper is a, um, a tiny man. So she walks into his place and it's like a, he's a hobbit. Like not like hobbit, like fit, but like he's like a childlike size. So they have this conversation over, they're having something to eat sitting around a dinner table. And he's in a giant chair, like a kid with his, with his legs sort of hovering. And she's in the chair, like this masculine warrior, just kind of sitting there. It's so overt. It's just, I mean, it's obviously it's, it's played for laughs, but it's, horribly stupid and uh chris pine's character is just a moron i mean he's uh an idiot and okay without seeing you haven't seen the movie you've only seen the trailer what ethnicity is chris pine's character's wife in the movie gary you get one guess black dang it you got it right yeah exactly it's just like it's sort of like it's so funny it's just like you can just predict it it's this is why i'm saying you could review the movie not having seen it then see the movie and watch your review and your review would be accurate. Mm -hmm. That's how predictable these people are. It's incredible, incredibly predictable trash. But this thing with Bradley Cooper, which was a surprise, I don't think he's not in any of the trailers. So it's the surprise cameo, but that just tells you everything you need to know. He's a tiny man. He's a small man. And the writer said that they thought emasculating men would be fun and fresh and different. So well, I mean, look, that That's scene it. out of context, I guess, could be fun, but the entire movie kind of does that. And but I'm, I just but, but the tone of it, the tone of it is like a cheesy TV show. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I was I, told it was it was Princess Bride. It's definitely it. not. It's not that. It's not gonna be a classic that you're gonna revisit. Hundred percent, you're not going to revisit it. Well, that just tells I, me I just I was going to just Princess Bride. Sorry. On, on that point as well about the male leads, it's like okay, imagine if I was a producer of a uh, or, or showrunner or whatever for a new movie, and I said, right, we're going to do something fun and fresh, and we're going to portray all the women as useless, incompetent bimbos who have to be saved by the men all the time. Um, yeah, like it's it's different because we've not had much of that recently. Like, how do you think that would be received? Very I know it, it's, yeah, but it's like, well. but then you can come out and say stupid shit like this, and everyone's like, uh, "Yeah, brilliant, great uh -huh. idea." You know, all the all the fucking trades will be like, "Yeah, that's awesome." It's uh, it's exactly what movies need now. It's like, why is this okay? Why 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 is it like everyone else sees it as a complete meme, like just a joke of like, oh, of course you're gonna, um, you know, gonna have like dumb incompetent men. Uh, an awesome ass kicking women in your movie because that's the that's everything now like that's how movies get made but it's like still treated as if it's some fresh new idea that no one's considered before it's it's i don't know how it works like do they just live in a complete bubble where they don't even understand like how how played out all these tropes are no they don't. I, think it's, I think it's also because this is you know movies take so long to make right hmm. from like concept to screenplay to whatever it's like what average seven years you know um faster in hollywood when you have money but i think that's why it's like it's going to be turning everything around is going to be like doing a, a 180 on a battleship it's a it's not a quick turn yeah 
And everything in Hollywood moves at a glacial pace anyways. We're looking at years to course correct, you yeah. know, at best. And even if they had realized it, the script was written, it was in production, Chris Pine was into it, whatever. But that scene just tells you everything about how the male characters are 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 treated. I, I'll say I found it at least more entertaining than Shazam Fury of the Gods, which I thought was so uh mid and just like, why mm-hmm. did we need why did we need that? By the way, your drinker, your uh I watched your video, I think this morning. Um, your review of it, which spot on. Um, it's just, what's the point of any of this? So, uh, but yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna do. I think John Wick is gonna overperform and do well this weekend. They're looking at north of a hundred million so far, wow. and then um, Dungeons and Dragons is gonna come out and just do okay. Well, actually, Chris, well, I, that's the worst review I've heard of it so far. What of Dungeons and Dragons? Yeah, a lot of the people that I've talked to that have seen it, like. They kind of liked it more than you did. So it's just uh, well, it's also one of those movies that it, it feels like it has to have wall to wall music, which gets annoying to me. That's lazy. That's that to me. I associate that with TV. Uh, Score music or like have, off hits. It's not epic at all, but it is more fun than I thought it would be. But there's a lot of things that stand out where you just you just sort of you know go like that or cringe and. and I mean, and this is this is anecdotal, but like there doesn't seem to be any buzz around it. And no. I'm assuming it wasn't a cheap movie to make because if you're doing a big fantasy movie like this with a lot of CGI, like it's going to be expensive. And so, true. I feel like it's probably going to have to do. It's going to have to do pretty serious numbers at the box office to make back its budget. It's like a hundred and fifty million dollar budget. Yeah. 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 So that's that's pretty hefty. So unless it like kind of overperforms, like I can't really see it making money. Yeah, you know, it's, like I get, like I say, it could just be me, like, but I just haven't heard any chat about it at all, apart from that negative shit about, like, yeah, the emasculate, emasculated male leads. That's not the kind of publicity you want either. They've done a bunch either. of really early screenings, yeah. Uh, to to, but like, it, I don't think it's generated a ton of. Buzz. I will say this. I will say this much. When I tried to go see it last Sunday because I had an opportunity to go see it in Madison on an early screening, it was sold out. I really? Get into it. Yeah, yeah, the screening I went to was packed. It was packed, but it's like they're doing one screening at one time. It was like two in the afternoon. I think it's playing again this uh, Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, it's, I'm I'm seeing it uh, on the 26th. I got. Yeah, tickets. you'll see it a little early. That's cool. Yeah, there's plenty of tickets. Yeah. Uh, Lord of the Rings, though, Return of the King. Yes. <laughs> uh, the screening of the 13th. That that sold out. Sold no. out. They'll add screenings. They do that with Fathom events. They will add additional screenings. Well, they're doing two. Doing well. They're doing like a 13th, a 19th, and the 20th in the UK and Canada. I think. Nice. Damn, talk about money for old role pay. I, I just think, yeah, but re releasing a 20 year old movie, why not? Make well, money I, out of it. I think a lot of us were saying that this is what they should do to get us primed for some more stuff for the, you know, between now and when they get other stuff out is re release the original trilogy and stuff like that. And then you got the War of Rohirrim coming yeah. out this next year. And. We got a yeah. 20th anniversary of Return of the King in the last two yeah. years. We had 20th anniversary of Two Towers and uh, Fellowship and Warner Brothers did nothing. Yeah, so I stupid. Know. So stupid. Yeah, yeah, it's like that's one of your biggest IPs, you know, and if you're trying to build some hype for like upcoming movies, like this is the perfect way to do it. Remind people of what you're capable of producing. Well, and I don't envy Zaslav. He and Gary probably knows what I'm talking about and so does Chris and stuff like that when I say Warner Brothers has been a clusterfuck for over 20 years. Mm-hmm. They have been a company where I constantly hear one hand does not know what one hand is doing to the other. Uh, and the other one's up its butt. And <laughs> they've been spending money like drunken sailors for the past 10 years. And I don't know how the fuck Toby Emmerich ever became president of the company when Mike DeLuca should have got the job years ago. And lo and behold, look who's got the job now. And I was saying that for years. Uh, it just, they, they, they have taken a company that could have actually competed with Disney and bested Disney in the past two decades and turned it into this piggy bank for a bunch of, you know, spoiled, rotten. I don't even want to say half the words I want to say right now, but like a lot of the people that were running that I company. I said cunty earlier. Years, you can say whatever yeah, words you I, want. I'm yeah. trying to be a little cunty. classier, I guess. Oh, I guess worse than that. Sorry. Uh, it, it just means more stuff for me to edit out later. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, really? I'm trying to be. I've been trying oh, to. Like, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Oh, that. no, God, it doesn't matter. 
trying to be better about not swearing and saying so much stuff like that lately. But yeah, there's just been a, a like a perfect example of this. Is I don't care this real, like stream. Real probably. quick story I can say, yeah. about is that, and this will give you an example of what Warner Brothers has been like for years. The DC department kept trying to tell the the animation department because this is how fucking separated and screwed up shit was over there that they wanted to get the Batman animated series remastered and released on Blu-ray. And the, t- the animated TV department kept saying, eh, we don't see, there's there's no interest in it. For years, they kept saying this. And finally, finally they broke through and they're like, all right, fine, we'll put it up as a, a Warner uh, Archives collection. Sold out in minutes. They're like, oh shit, maybe we should release this as a regular release. So they pushed it back a few months and released it as a regular release because it was you know, arguably one of the huge, most, everybody was like, oh my God, Batman, the animated series, and it's completely remastered and all this stuff. It's like, yeah, we told you there was an audience for that. And since then we've gotten each and every one of the animated series released on, on, in, in HD. And since then they've been working their way through them. It's like, well, duh, people want to see this stuff. Batman, the animated series is beloved, but one department didn't see the, the reason for it. And the other department was clamoring for it. So it's like, this is how stupid they were over there. They had no idea what anybody was doing and they were working against each other for more years than not. Yeah, th- there was such a backstabbing climate forever. And yeah, they've had these massive IPs, never, never know what to do with them. Exactly, yeah. yeah stupid, stupid people. Uh, the wonderful state of entertainment. I love Shall it. Shall we it's do fun. some super chats? Sure. So yeah, we've like got those. a little bit of time left. Maybe try and do a few. Uh, okay, bear with me a second. I like those almost as much as Chris's hair. <laughs> it, it's it's fantastic it's hair. I'm awesome kind of jealous right now. I know, well. It's got a life its own. <laughs> of course, I'm jealous. You're doing you Professor it. <laughs> X. I always thought you were just doing Professor X. Sure. It's entire. It's sure. entirely voluntary, isn't it, Tom? <laughs> you look like a badass. Totally. <laughs> grow, grow a proper like lumberjack beard, and like, yeah, you'd be all right. Yeah, and and YouTube really doesn't pay attention to this stuff later in streams. Much worse than f bombs. Trust me. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, but well, it's like the first two minutes or something. That's when you've got first to watch. Minutes. But yeah. beyond that, you're fine. <laughs> they tend to miss other stuff later. Like mm-hmm. Better to be really boring in the opening two minutes. So whoever checks it, it's like, eh, whatever, it's fine. Right. Yeah. This improves it. Um. Anyway, I'll go into the super chats here. The first one is from Slack Attack, who says, "When will studios understand the true value of a fan? They can be your greatest ally or your worst enemy." That is so fucking true. It's always been hilarious because this this stuff was all built by fans, where they keep trying to forget that. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, I mean, there was a time even when um, Lucasfilm, Star Wars, they loved fans. Uh, Mary Franklin, who ran Star Wars Celebration, she knew what fans like. Like everything was spot on from like the panels that they did, even down to the merch. There really was a love between uh, they. They had uh, Steve Sansweet who used to work at Lucasfilm. He was like the fan relations person. You got the sense that they cared about what fans think. And now it's just, if you don't like what we're putting out, you're racist. By the way, Reva figures on sale at Target right now. Tom, run and get one. Mail it to Ryan Cannell. Honestly, like you could buy them just to put them in a hydraulic press or something. And I think people would pay to watch that. <laughs> oh, I still get pictures every, almost monthly where people will send me like rose t- stacks of rose ticos they see in a junk store or whatever, you know, whatever your store you have oh. in your, your dollar stores and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next one is from LC Le Pen, who says, Evening, gents. Just finished a rewatch of the show Spaced and got me nostalgic for the Cornetto team. Uh, do you think that Edgar, Nick, Simon, and the rest will still have that magic, or has their star begun to fade? I'd say Simon's has begun to fade. Simon's faded. Yeah, yeah. he's been subsumed into the Hollywood machine, hasn't he? British Kevin Smith. Last I saw Nick Frost was <laughs> in The Nevers. He played like the boss of the basically like the hobos. Sort of, sort of. He, was, he was pretty good in that, so I don't know uh, what he's up to. Edgar Wright. S- Anyone see Last Night in Soho? Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, I, I thought it was probably the wrong genre for Edgar Wright. It was a mess. Edgar, I kind of hated it. Yeah, it was Great. a mess. I, I bought it and I haven't seen it yet. It was a blind buy. It's just a guy who's like supremely good at like fast-paced, witty, like comedic um, satire films, trying to do a, a, a fairly straight-laced horror movie. Well, the story uh, yeah. was bonkers and shit by the time we got to the end. Was... Yeah, and again, the morality was absolutely fucked. Oh god, just like yes. a Marvel movie. 
Mm-hmm. It's oh, it like, okay, like I get that a lot of the guys who who go to visit prostitutes are not good people, but I'm pretty sure you can't just justify murdering them. Like, yeah, that's that's not that's not a good mor- like a good moral balance right there. And who knows? Maybe if the three of them got back together, they would all ignite each other's creative juices or some shit. I don't know, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What's I think up maybe with the they. Whole point. I've always hoped they might have a Ricky Gervais kind of character arc. You know, like like he kind of went into the Hollywood mindset for a few years, and you know, yeah, lost a lot of weight and just like looked a lot kind of more traditional Hollywood producer actor type guy, and then just said, "No, fuck this, it's so fake. I just want out." And then he's just become a lot more like his his authentic self again. I just kind of mm-hmm. want to see that happen to them. I don't think it'll happen to Simon Pegg because he's way in there. Yeah. Yeah, he knows everybody. Yeah. Uh, the Critical Abstainer says, Best cameo in a movie? I got, uh, I've got. i got to go with Hot Shots 2, Martin and Charlie Sheen reading off Platoon and Apocalypse Now scripts and narrative. I loved you in Wall Street. That was a pretty good cameo. <laughs> That's damn good. The only other one I could think of that's as good as that, Loaded Weapon 1, when they blow up the uh, camper and Bruce Willis pops out and he's like, what the hell? And I'm like, oh, sorry, wrong one. Uh, this isn't yeah. 402, is it? No, that's two down. <laughs> I uh, I love cl- dressed as as McLean. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I love Charlton Heston in Wayne's World, where he just gives this this like little monologue about how he knew a girl. Here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Remember, um, like reduces everyone to tears. Do you remember uh, Robert Patrick turning up in Wayne's World as well? Gets, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah! It's oh like, yes, that's T- a great one. T one thousand. You see this yeah, boy? Mike, Mike, yeah, yeah, and they're like, ah. ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that no, was Bill Murray and Zombie was... Lad. Do you remember that? That one was pretty good too. Yeah, I mean, that's not even a cameo. That's a proper like part. Like he was in it yeah. for, yeah. A good for like ten time. minutes. It's, it's like a yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that's that's for me. That's beyond the, a cameo. I guess he's in it more than Space Jam. I think. <laughs> Um, Waylon Bacephus says Blood Diamond or The Departed I'd go for Blood Diamond personally Departed I need to rewatch Blood Diamond and then I can Departed. answer I, I really Departed. like Blood Diamond I think it's, Blood Diamond's I, good I mean, I mean to review it sometime actually um, Go Broke says Mauler please I need more Batwoman <laughs> it's on the way There, are, there are more. what's on the way as well is Gotham Knights we've been watching that that's another shit show <laughs> I've heard oh, about Lord. this. I've been hearing about that. Are, yeah, isn't there about goes, twelve people watching it at this point? Yes, I am one of those twelve. Uh, <laughs> uh, Disparu is one of the others. Disparu as an EFAB. That's it. It's a tough, tough one. Yeah. Um, we're also obviously still watching Mando as well. Not eating good lately for TV shows, but that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's slim pickings right now. Except uh, for Star wait. Trek Picard season Except three. For Star Trek. Yes. Yeah, it's been good stuff. Uh, Waylon Bacephus says you guys should have Jensari one on. He does some good Star Wars stuff, which is worse, Glass Onion or TLJ? Oh no! Well, it's obvious the damage done by TLJ is unmatched when you put it in a room with like Glass Onion because Glass Onion is just shit on his own work. But Glass Onion is pretty fucking terrible. Like, uh. <laughs> I think if I had to pick, which would I rather watch again? It would probably be Glass Onion. Yeah, but Glass Onion isn't stinking up a whole other franchise, right? Mahler's right. Like, yeah. That's, only, that's yeah. only its own thing. It's not hurting anything else. The Last Jedi, arguably, is the cancer that killed Star Wars. Well, that that, that yeah, that's what I mean. And that's why I, yeah. I would consider yeah, TLJ a worse I would argue movie. For, Force Awakens. I was about to say, Force Awakens but, is the cancer. The TLJ was like a new catalyst, but yeah. yeah. I hated it. I, there was still yeah, one, at least one, somewhere you could go after like, that. One is Hiroshima but, and the other one's Nagasaki. Okay. Well, it's, exactly. it's like Force, reason... a, Force Awakens was the cancer, and then it's like TLJ was AIDS. It's like the best. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit, yeah. That's good. Well, the thing is, is, because after the Force Awakens, there was still at least stuff there you could build on, regardless. I mean, the sad part is, yeah, you've you've ruined the the chance to put all three of the original cast members together. That's true. But there's still, I think the Duel of the Fates script proved that even even with what crap was there, there was still something you could be built on it. But yeah, at that point, it was over with. So Yeah, yeah I actually think that if we rewound to the end of T- TFA, Star Wars could still be rescued to some yes. degree. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I think so. 
with a I really, know, a, a really solid back. good second movie, I think they could have done something with it. Because you make how Han you Solo's back. death mean something in the second film. That's how. I, I don't see how you come back from that. They ruined the death scene of Han Solo, yeah, one of the did. greatest characters. They in did. The they, they ruined yeah. it. You you I, I think left, I think you could have you could have salvaged the entire salvage, trilogy. Yeah, I don't know yeah, if it would have been great, but right. the, you could salvage and then retcon that death in this like with a flashback or something. But uh, or make it mean I, first, something. I, anyway. Yeah, TFA. First, the minute that happened, I was like, uh-uh, I'm, I'm done. Yeah, same here. I okay. thought there's yeah, no I'm there's no redemption for the son. F this doesn't even respect the fans, and also a death of a character like that that's iconic, that's meaningful. It's not about the character dying. They're dead, which is a stupid death. It's, it's, you know, yeah. it was dumb. So, so the book well, written about the 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 Disney uh, Disney failing with Star Wars should be called Killing Han Solo. Yes, it should be because uh, also yeah. it's about the characters that loved that character and how they respond, how they react. That's why yeah. Spock's death in Star Trek II: The Wrath of Khan is one of the great ways it respected the legacy character of Spock and the people who loved Spock through through decades, Kirk, McCoy, Scotty, they were there to witness yeah. the death. And it was a meaningful death because he was sacrificing himself to save the ship and everyone. Like that is me. Han Solo's death was meaningless. It was stupid. And on that note, I got to run guys, but yeah. I, but you got me wound up and pissed off. So <laughs> well, uh, that's a good way to finish up any open bar. Like Chris, honestly, uh, yeah, no, out on a friend. <laughs> thank you for this. All right, take thank care. You for, okay, thanks, man. Dude. It's funny, All he right. said that there's uh, no redemption or whatever for the son. It's like, hey, he forgave himself in the third one. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah he conjured up an imaginary his... version of his dad to forgive him. He's killing his mom, yeah. No, I mean, I guess I, I was going to say to Chris, maybe, just maybe if in the second film had that ca the death of Han Solo been the catalyst for Luke Skywalker to get up off his ass and get involved, then yeah. maybe the death of Han Solo could have meant something. Like to me, that's like the moment shit should have changed. Like when Ray's like Han Solo's dead and she was killed by Ben Solo. No, that's no, no. Moment. But you don't no, Tom, you don't understand the genius of The Last Jedi. Like what we got was uh, <laughs> uh Luke asking about what happened to Han, and then we cut away to a completely different scene, so we I never know. even see his reaction. Well, we know he's I sad. Know. Why do we need to see it? We know he's yeah. sad. It's like remember, it's just more sad now. Remember, when we were too dumb to understand the Last Jedi. That was one of the. Oh, that was a good. Do every Ryan Johnson movie they say that they say you too. You just don't understand it. It went over your head. It's a difficult it's like argument a to make with film, Glass yeah. Onion when it's intentionally dumb. It's like, well, you're too dumb to understand the dumbness of this film. <laughs> you have it's like to be dumb. <laughs> of dumb. Well, and that was uh, that was what I was going to say. TFA annihilates this, the will building of Star Wars and then it killed Han Solo. And it's like, well, we still got Luke, we still got Leia, we still got like Vader, Kenobi. They all still, all these characters, Boba Fett. And, you, and you're like, where are we now? It's like, we got nothing left. Yeah. <laughs> they killed it all. Like, we have strip mined Star Wars for everything that is worth. And now there is nothing. It's a barren wasteland of disastrous nothingness. Mm -hmm. One of hey, my most invested in. Stellan Skarsgård's character from a TV show that's a spin-off from a movie that was a prequel to one of the movies. That's what I care yep. about the most now. In Star isn't Wars. That, uh, isn't that interesting? I am uh, just so sick and tired of the... Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, no, from RRTNZ said, uh, Hail Drinker and Mower loved the Wrath of Khan commentary video, as did many others. What film mm. are you planning to do next? Maybe Dodgeball? Cheers, boys. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I'm up for anything because I enjoy doing those. But I've seen a lot of people they want they want you to show me a uh, uh, search for Spock. I think. I mean, it kind of makes sense, I guess, to to do the next one. Yeah, you know, well, you got to do the trilogy, don't you? I think I think so because like they're they're so varied and like there's kind of a lot to chew over in terms of like um, how you continue a story like this. And you know, one of the questions you asked me is like, you know, this whole Genesis device thing does that ever get dealt with again? It's like, well. Watch the well, next movie, I suppose. <laughs> we get to see it in well, uh, uh, the sequel to it in uh, Picard season three. Or it really? did, yeah, that it little cool moment. Yeah, yeah. It did make me smile. I it hate did. to say it, it, did make me smile. Yep. It doesn't I, I don't understand how the Genesis device ended up there, but never mind. <laughs> That's well, fine. What about what about the other guy who's in there? afterwards yeah. i was like yeah because it like yeah yeah that was good stuff mm -hmm. um 
Elsie Le Pen says Mindy Kaling got the Medal of Arts from uh, President <laughs> Biden. I saw that. You just know uh, Biden just was like, you. "What? What the fuck am I even doing here? <laughs> Who is this person? What's going on?" I'm gonna use this. He just wanted to smell her hair. No, he looked over. He's like, "Who's this Mexican lady? Is she gonna vacuum?" <laughs> God. I no, it took me ages to believe that was a real story. I was certain yeah. it was parody. I was like, ah, that's funny. And I kept well, getting told it was real. I was like, there's no way that's real. No, it's totally real. But I thought maybe, just maybe, it was a it was a, an award for bringing the left and right together because I think everybody agreed that Belma was just too woke for woke. That that truly united the internet and their exactly. Hatred. Like at that point, I think everybody's just like, yeah, no, you this is too far. Like. One of those things was like, this is your thing, right? You're, you you made this to make us look bad. Like, this is your thing. This, nobody wants ownership of this. Yeah, she's horrible. basically like the Ozzy, Ozzy Mandeus of wokeness. <laughs> like she's, through her own destruction. I think, yes. I guess you deserve uh, a medal for that, yeah. And we're all Dr. I'm, Manhattan and we just want to leave. Yes. Go to Mars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Except for some of us YouTubers, we're actually like more like Rorschach. We're gonna tell the world, fuck yeah. you. Yeah. That's Nitsperu. He's like, make a season two. I fucking dare you. <laughs> make yep. a season yeah. two. Never compromise. We're gonna watch it burn. Uh, Narsul One says, I had to say a big goodbye to our dog today, but I'm grateful that Open Bar and FNT are here to help me get through it. Uh, cheers to the independent creators and cherish your doggos, everyone. Oh, I'm Doggo. sorry, man. Cheers sorry, to your doggo. Man. I'm sorry you lost him. Yeah. Mm. Those are the toughest because you know it's just. <sighs> yeah. Oh man, yep. I like the the quartering ones put out a video like it was on the day he had to get his dog put down. Mm. I, I don't I don't know if I would have put out a video of that, but yeah, he was just like it's it's time. We gave him his last meal and stuff, and uh, we just knew it was like we couldn't keep going on with this. And fucking hell, that's a hard video to watch. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, we've all been there. We've all been through the the angst of having to get the dog to the vets for the last time, and oh, it's a tough one. I'm pretty close to that right now with oh. uh, with Parker. With Parker. Ah, uh, shit, man. I'm sorry. It's all good. She was a good dog. Oh, she's she still is. Yeah. She's she's still happy. She's having a hard time, man. Yeah, that's too bad. The old. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 hard, but well, you always remember like the, all the great times that you had with them, and like you gave them a great life. That's yeah. the best you can do for them, I guess. Um, Thomas Costigan says, "Evening, chaps. Muller, I just finished Buffy, beginning to end. First time viewing. What a top notch show. No wonder hey. you love it. Not long until Resi Four. Yes, <laughs> literally hours. But yeah, uh, I saw them. somebody. Oh no, that was you tweeting, right? Is it coming out soon, or did you get it already? Didn't somebody just tweet? Wasn't that you, Drinker? It's me. Yeah, I got. No, I, I got my it. copy. Like, I think it's not meant to be out until tomorrow, right? And I wanted to do a stream of me playing it this afternoon, but because I had this stream set up, it wouldn't let me do two, and so it just blocked the stream from going out. Like, it, it's weird. Huh? Um, huh. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. Like. Because like I've when when I do these that. open bar streams, I usually set them up a few hours in advance so people know it's coming. Yeah, and I don't know if like YouTube because I already had one stream like all ready to go and already out there, it just wouldn't let me do That's a weird. second live stream I've of never the game. That, yeah. Never had that problem. Did you try and bypass it by like going through StreamYard or something? Sorry, I mean, I was yeah. doing it through the. <laughs> I was that. doing it through the PlayStation, like the PS5 will let you stream oh. direct to YouTube. And it was streaming, but then there was nobody watching it. It was just like, you know, zero. It was just like non-existent. Did you, did you try to set up a stream from your computer first? No. That's probably why. If you had set yeah. up one specifically for that at that time, it probably, because it was trying to probably interact with the other one. That's my guess. Otherwise, you just try to unplug it and plug it back in, and that might make it work. We'll just delete the old <laughs> yeah. one. The Someone suggests that I bypass the compressor, so I don't ah. know. You just bypass the compressor. <laughs> just start ripping random circuit boards out the PS5. It's like, look, I bypassed it. <laughs> it works now. Uh, never mind. Yeah, I'll I think that's I'll... the trick of it, actually, to be honest with you. I'll, I'll stream it tomorrow, anyway, because, uh, yeah, I want to play it. But anyway, um, 
Andrew McCarthy says, Gary, thoughts on All-Star Superman and Red Sun movie and book. Also, do you like Spider-Man 3? Uh, Spider-Man 3. You know what? There's something. I, I like Bully Maguire. I like Spider-Man. <laughs> Bad movie, but I like it. Uh, All-Star Superman is a great story. Uh, I wouldn't start out. I wouldn't base Superman legacy off of it. Like James Gunn. He keeps putting a, the Frank Quitely art up from that story. I wouldn't start with that, but it's a good story. What was the other one? But it was uh, uh, All Star Superman and Red Sun. Red Sun's a very good story by itself. Yes, that's Mark Millar's uh, uh, communist Superman. Yeah. If, if Superman had lasted, it, it landed in communist Russia. It's a very good story. I would imagine that's a very popular one in Hollywood today. Oh, pr that's probably what they want to adapt. In Russia, Superman don't save us; we save Superman. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Marky Mark says, good evening, guys. Between Marvel, DC, and Star Wars, if you could choose one to have a redemption with great movies, which one would it be? Oh. I think Star Wars deserves it most. I'm trying to think. Like, that's, that's actually... Because hmm. the thing is, a series of good movies from Marvel, does that mean we get a good one per every cat you know like bringing them all back undoing all the damage because that's a significant star wars the kind of same thing i guess um i think dc is not going to be the one i choose out of the three well dc never really got off the ground anyway like it never crashed and burned because it never really flew in the first place yeah that's tough i would say star wars i agree star wars is the more deserving i think so of a redemption i don't know if, I mean, we're just talking fantasy here because that's not possible it's just yeah. not but uh, no, we'll Disney get one good movie gonna, at some point. But they're going to yeah. remake the prequels in the original trilogy. That's that's what they're going to do. They they can. I hope that's after they, our they surely they cannot they possibly make that work. Thousand percent will because that's looking one of the last few cards they'll ever have. The only reason I think it'll be after our lifetime is because I'm sure, like with Hitchcock, nope. George has some stipulation. But I hope I'm. I uh, unless I croak, I'm going to be seen at my lifetime. That is, I'm sticking <laughs> with it. I mean, George is uh, what pushing eighty. So, well, here's the thing: like, is if they could release the original Star Wars movies, I think they would have by now, like the original versions. So I'm sure George has some kind of stipulation in place because even Hitchcock had stipulations to where you couldn't remake his movies until after like thirty years after him and all that kind of crap. So I don't know. I, I mean, hope those are they're they're in place. I could be wrong, but uh, yeah. To, to be fair, like George stipulated that Kathleen Kennedy had to take over as president of Lucasfilm. So I don't know if he's necessarily the best guy for like long term I know, and planning. Gary could be right. He could have signed all that away. But I have a hard time believing that if Disney couldn't just print money and re-release like you know the Star Wars trilogy as it was originally released for the first time on Blu-ray, that would that would be the biggest selling Blu-ray of all time right now. Yes, there's I agree. no joke. But, the, so you know, if, we're talking about the same town that wouldn't release Lord of the Rings on its fucking 20th anniversary. Well, that's yeah. Warner Brothers still, too. But, no, same I get what town, you're saying, Gary. Same dumbasses. I, I know. They're the same dumbasses. I, I, yeah. what the, They were able to put it off because Mandalorian and that time period that they're effing around in was working. It's not working anymore. Now, they'll figure that out in two years. They're not going to figure it out today. But uh, it's not working anymore. They've got nothing. Ac Acolyte's going to turn it around. Former Harvey Weinstein assistant Leslie Hebner is going to turn Star Wars around, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you know what her favorite Star Wars is? All the Star Wars. All, All of the Star Wars. Of course, All yeah. Of Star Wars, yeah. It's like how, how Brie Larson's favorite video game is Nintendo. I love um, Nintendo. Did you see her? <laughs> Do you see her Harper's Bazaar cover and the headline? Uh, uh, I've got it right here. It says she loves uh, all the Nintendos. Uh, here we go. This is what Brie Larson has to say about Hollywood. Uh, we don't want to see that. We want to see. Or maybe I didn't save it. I thought I saved it. Uh, she was on the cover of Harper Bazaar showing boob, straight up showing boob. She's all Brie Lar I'm paraphrasing. Brie Larson isn't go is going off script for Hollywood, and and like it, it just was such a desperation move. It's like OnlyFans is coming up for Brie Larson. That's going awesome. off script. It's like whatever. What other generic platitudes can we throw at her? Like making her own rules. You making know? her own <laughs> rules. That's hey man, how about doing. she's not going to destroy the glass ceiling? She's going to break down the wall and then rebuild yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here it is. Uh, Brie Larson refuses to stick to Hollywood script. And it's, yeah, so she's wearing a jacket with no shirt on. You can see part of her boob. 
I'll drink to that, man. <laughs> Here's the pre Larson's boobs. <laughs> so how is she going off script exactly? Uh, if you can see that or not. Uh, by not getting scripts. Uh, that's how she's going off script. Oh, uh, she's been she's been very busy the past few years, hasn't she? Starred in yeah. literally one movie. <laughs> so after all the all the hubbub of uh, her being a diva behind the scenes mm. on Marvel, Marvel's getting delayed, and it's possibly because of her. All of a sudden, she's half naked on a freaking yeah cover. What a coincidence! God damn, I wish we could do that. <laughs> I know, right? Like, uh, we're not so popular anymore. Just <laughs> you know. hey, Gary, I just pulled up that. I pulled up that article. Um, I just, can I just read this part of it? It's kind of funny. Please do, because I... It's... Do it, Mulder. Yeah, this is the first time I've come into contact with this article here. Give us some oh. boot pictures as well. So it says, Despite the fact that she is Captain Marvel, star of the first female-led superhero franchise in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and despite the fact that she is an Oscar winner, and despite the fact that she's been acting since she was six, Larson, now 33, is still rarely recognized in public. <laughs> That's just something they've got in here. It's like, oh, uh, I wonder if there's a reason for that. I don't know. <laughs> it's a, there's a difference between not being recognized and just no one wants to talk to her. <laughs> How narcissistic is that? Though? That's pretty really? passive aggressive from the article, isn't it? Like, hmm. <laughs> despite well, she had to things. have brought that up, though, Mahler, right? Like, she had to have. Otherwise, I, I, like. I haven't read this article. I don't even know the nature of it. I just saw that part. It's out like, so. dis despite Marvel doing everything possible to make her happen, she hasn't happened. <laughs> you know, <it's> like, <laughs> she sadly is the new Jai Courtney. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, Move over, my, Taylor Keish. Yeah. My next question, my next one here is from Juan Garcias. Uh, Gary, thoughts on Southpaw's criticisms of Spider-Man 2? Do you agree with them? And would that make Spider-Man 2 not the best? Um, I don't agree with them. Uh, and I think it's from not having a lot of experience with film analysis. That would be my opinion on that. Spider-Man 2 is one of the greatest superhero films ever made. Fair play. And not um, really understanding Sam Raimi and... and uh, how he is and like he's fallible believe me he's fallible but spider-man uh, right? absolutely, <laughs> absolutely uh uh one of the most critically acclaimed movies of uh when spider-man 2 was released and one of the highest audience scores at the time it was absolutely a very popular movie at the time that absolutely holds up because it's a heroic movie uh back in the early days of uh superhero films and i would argue marvel hasn't gotten even close to equaling that in oh, 10 years it's a weird thing watching the old raimi spider-man trilogy because that early 2000s period like watching them now they've got such charm and optimism to them and style like yeah it's just there's something that it's unique to them that is just so missing from films nowadays like it's just uh yeah, I don't know if there's a little bit of rose tinted glasses coming on when you look back at them, but like they're just Maybe. so Maybe. fun and pleasant to watch and charming. I, I don't are, know how else to describe it. Often compare newer sort of third act superhero stuff with uh, Spider Man One. You know where he's like torn up, the mask is in like shreds, he's got blood, sweat, and like he's just, you know, he's messed up basically. And and they'll be like, these days you'll have like Paul Rudd with some mud on his face or something. Mm -hmm. It's like there you go. It doesn't feel as um as raw in any way, shape, or form, sort of thing. It's just obviously there's a lot more to a film. And <laughs> have you ever have you ever seen the the re edits of uh, of Spider Man Two? I think it is where like his he's trying to stop the train and his fucking arms rip off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, it's pretty really sure, funny. Pretty sure it was Cardinal Digital that did all that. And, uh, it's it's good though like it's uh it's pretty convincing what they've done like obviously oh, yeah, not dude, much their, budget dude, their reputation has been stellar right up until a few weeks ago when they did the ai thing and now everyone's like mm. yeah wah, wah, wah. Mm. yep uh marky mark saying drink her any chance you'll make it to san diego comic-con um i think it's more likely you'll see me in new york comic-con this year um are you gonna go I mean, it's in the it's in the works right now. Okay, but, um, well, if you go, then I'll go. I got media passes. Well, we'll you go. will see me at Anime Matsuri. Oh well, then shit, that'll be easier because I could, that's a two hour drive. Yeah. Awesome. 
Nice. So, yeah. Oh, good. So, so, doing that, apparently. Good. You should come down to my house. Can, I will we'll come to your barbecue. house. Yeah. You can barbecue. It'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just show up in the middle of the night. You won't yeah, even know I'm coming. You welcome anytime, buddy. Hey, have some yeah. pineapple on pizza. Fuck yeah! <laughs> if I can throw some, if I can throw some jalapenos on there, I'll be yes. fine. No, there, it's not good without jalapenos. You got Yeah, have I like that on a pizza. Pepper of the gods. That's um, right. Juan Garcia says, "Gary, review the One Piece manga. Get a group together. More are joining as well on the great voyage known as the One Piece. Also, watch Dragon Ball Z." I have, I have a spare few years, yeah. Yeah, if yeah. I have another life, I'll try Dragon Ball Z. One Piece, I'll, I'll you know, somebody sent me a bunch of it, and I ha I, I feel obligated. I'll get to it, but uh, first things first. Got some things. Uh, the Outcast Creative says, Evening, gents. So Midnight Edge's stream regarding the toxic Disney Marvel saga must be a fun place to work. Uh, thanks for the ongoing support, Drinker. You legend. <laughs> Yeah, it uh, sounds like it's been fun there. Lucasfilm sounds very similar. And this is, you know, what we've talked about. There's always been this toxic nature in there. And a lot of people who used to work for Lucasfilm before Disney, and I'm sure it's the same way with Marvel and all the other places in there, is like they were fine before that. And as soon as they come over to Disney, it just becomes this thing where you're afraid to speak your mind or you're going to get canceled. Uh, we had a lot of people speak to us uh, after the Gina Carano thing that were scared shitless. Uh, that they're, you know, people were going to start combing through their uh, social media and be like, oh, there's something to cancel you for, you know. So, yeah, it's it's was that kind of an environment there, I've heard. Yeah. It's just it's garbage to work. Like, and Alonzo, I've heard, was just like a tyrant <clears throat> was the word that come up more than once. Oh, yeah. Uh, bully, I heard, was a very... <laughs> yep, bully. Term. We, we, heard, we heard these things, we heard didn't we, Gary? <laughs> we heard <laughs> these things. We did. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the thing we'll get the yeah i want to get the full story one day oh be nice uh kebbot says this open bar is the answer to life the universe and everything well i mean we, we try our best don't we yeah we can give it a shot uh jk fozel says r.i.p lance reddick and thank you yeah. to the open bar for showing me uh toys are me <laughs> dude chill i'm a, i'm on my period <laughs> No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Lance Reddick was amazing in that skit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> if you haven't seen funny. Toys Are Me, that like, give funny that a watch. That He's amazing. Uh, yeah, but yeah, think... awesome yeah. actor. Right. Taken from us far too soon. Um, tragic. Yeah, dude, that's yeah. gonna be weird seeing him tonight in a couple hours. I mean, I'm, um, I can't, did we ever I, find out what, what happened to him? Uh, natural causes. What they all they've said is natural, natural causes. causes. That's all we will say on YouTube. Okay. Well, that's what they the, 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 It is weird because it's like 60 year old natural causes. What do you mean? Like, what does that mean? He died of something. 60 year old <laughs> in, in like pretty good shape. Uh, yeah, yeah, he was yeah, still like, pretty healthy. Did he have a, an, an, a large something in his heart or something? Uh, yeah. I don't think we're allowed to speculate at all on this. Platform. And it all depends on what the family wants to le leave out to or, or let out. I yeah. Mean. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah, like, I'm not going to speculate. And like, uh, if they if they want to keep it private, I'll respect that for Absolutely. sure. Um, just Absolutely. curious, you know. But I think the chat's right. Somebody said it is uh, stroke season, so you know yep. that happens. It is. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. so. Um. What's the next one? Uh, JK, sorry, Ros Roscoe says, your Stranger Things 3 review comments are disabled. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Like, YouTube sometimes does that. It just disables comments on, on certain videos. Uh, but yeah, I'll get that looked at. Uh, also, get proper horror show on. Uh, she watches your videos, and I'd like to see you guys talk about Midsummer. Okay. Um, proper horror show. I'll need to look that one up. Um Psychic Scuba Diver says, Fantasy could be the next big movie genre if Brandon Sanderson can successfully adapt his books. He ran a record-shattering Kickstarter and is inventive enough to be the next George Lucas if he can secure creative control. Okay. Guy can write, man. He can write and get stuff out. I, um, I wish I... I'm not, I'm not too familiar with his stuff, so I don't know. Um... He he his Kickstarter campaign was huge. He uh he did uh he finished Wheel of Time, right? So Yeah, 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 yeah. Um 
Intelligent Crayon Admiral. Eater says, um, says, any thoughts on getting Clownfish TV, uh, both uh, Neon and Geeky, for a live stream? Or going outside the normal movie TV critic circles and getting Brandon Herrera or um, Garen Thumb for a John Wick 4 review? I mean, I don't know. Like, we're, we're open to having anyone on open bar. It's just... Uh, Why don't you get Keanu Reeves on? drinker yeah, yeah. <laughs> no nah, he's always like he's always contacting me gary he's like come on like drinker help me on and i'm yeah, just like no Keanu, stop yeah yeah like, it's like you're too needy oh, man no. you're he's you're cramping me pictures he's always like how do i look in these pants like yeah <laughs> um liam khan says drinker for future videos would you consider doing reviews for any anime i think you would really enjoy shows like black lagoon or full metal alchemist I mean, yeah, I mean, people recommend anime to to me all the time. It's just like you guys, you face the same problem. It's like, well, I don't have a hundred hours to spare to like go through all of this, like 10 seasons worth of content or whatever. Yeah, because um, FMA Brotherhood, I would be interested to see what you think of that. That's one of my favorites. What is it? Sorry. FM, uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. It's like, um, well, it's an anime. Okay. Yeah, that one does send it, but somebody mentioned Berserk in the chat. It's like, yeah, I do probably do Berserk first. Yeah, people. Yeah, people want me to watch Demon Slayer as well. So I mean, it's, yeah, it's a lot. Um, Wyft says, "Hey, drinkers, with The Last of Us done, and if you still want more zombies, check out Kingdom. It's a South Korean show that has a really fun take on the zombie genre." I've heard people talk about Kingdom before. I like the I first season. Good. Wasn't too fond of the second season, except the first episode. Oh, so, right. check it out, drink. See what you think. Uh, well, if you watch All of Us Are Dead, then I'll I'll watch that. How does that sound? I don't want to sacrifice it, that, that slot for that. I'd pick something else. <laughs> that's a Korean zombie movie or zombie TV show. It's pretty good. I think you might enjoy it. But anyway. Um, Timmy04 says, question for everyone. What's a great character in a TV show that never should have been killed off uh, or was just killed off way too early? For me, it's Ser Barristan Sami in Game of Thrones. Well, uh, I think everyone can agree with that one, yeah. yeah. Um, hmm. Tasha Still Yar popular, from yeah. Star Trek TNG. Yeah, that's a popular one. Uh -huh. Half the people in Deadwood? <laughs> mm -hmm. that, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was so perfect. Some of them, yes, but like there was just, I'd say that's more of a missed opportunity that actual people passed in real life before they could get to giving us any sort of tie up there. Yeah. Uh, Wash in Serenity. His death was so good, but it would, and it, and it had massive impact, but I would have loved another season of it. You know, I was about to say, we never had a chance of getting more of him anyway, right? So, yeah. But like it, but uh, I'm with it. Well, it's, it's it's up, trendy, it's up, you know, yeah. I, I'm going to say by Larkrace from Farscape. Oh my god, uh, what a reference! Yeah, there you go. I See, know, I can man. make what? references to things. Yeah, I, I like I loved, I loved his actor. I love the still character. Remember the, the shot, and he just, the last thing he says is Starburst, doesn't it? Yeah, and was, he destroys like, the command carrier. I need to do a shit. I don't know. know. I don't know if he was taken too early. I think that was him at his peak, like that storyline with uh, Talon. I, I just, I loved, uh, yeah, I loved his character. I thought, yeah, very interesting guy. The the it's arc funny that he was on. I when you watch, watch Farscape, he's kind of an annoying ass in like the first season, but when they yeah. turn him around, he's like one of the most interesting. But he gets so much shit from everyone else. Yeah, <laughs> like, he he's does. trying to be a better guy, but he gets so much abuse. Farscape is one of the most fascinating shows in terms of this, the amount of experimenting they were doing with like oh, yeah. changing all kinds of dynamics. Do you remember the the time where they split the team into two different teams that both have a Crichton? The it's like yeah, the, the, the John gets like, cloned. Yeah, dude, what a bizarre thing to do with a TV show. And yeah, it works. Yep. Yep. Damn. Could like forget yeah. something like that again. Oh, uh, Farscape was like awesome. Like at it its peak, awesome. it was fantastic stuff. Like season four, I think they went a bit too far into the quirky, weird zone, um, and it turned people off a little bit. But man, like when in terms of like just raw creativity and experimentation, yeah, it was a, a character cool development. show. Yeah. Well, to give people an idea, isn't there an episode? I think it's season four where because they all get like a takeaway. That's like an alien takeaway, and then they all realize they're about to die if they don't get us like a solution. But it also, if you ate, this is so hard to explain. There's like three colors, and there's two people who eat each color, and that you're now connected to each other, where you experience each other's feelings or something. It's like, what? And it's like, yeah, fuck it, whatever. 
somebody, <laughs> somebody was shrooming. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> But in a good well, they, they they do the classic body swap in episode as well, and like yeah. when John gets put into Aaron's body, like they they just don't hold back. They're like, yeah, I'm in a woman's body with boobs. So like, of course, I'm gonna have some fun with this. You yeah, know, it's, it's just like it's great. Like, yeah, it's it's awesome fun. Um, yeah, I know you guys were talking about shows, but a lot of people in the chat were bringing up Darth Maul, and I gotta agree with that. Keeping Darth Maul around probably would have helped episode two definitely. I agree with Star that. Wars. Yeah. Yep. What, what an interesting antagonist he could have been if he was yeah. developed a well, bit more. He was you have him ass. kill Qui Gon, and then him and Obi Wan—they've got a huge feud. Exactly. To carry over, do it. Yeah. Good idea. Um, Al Akindolfer says Shazam Two was so bad it re retroactively caused COVID. <laughs> 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 I don't know about that. Jesus, <laughs> that's pretty harsh. That's a good one. Uh, it's, it's like, oh, what's that? What's that guy that does all those Steven Seagal movie reviews? And it's like the titles are like, "This Steven Seagal movie is so bad it will make you turn vegan or something." <laughs> 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 oh, shit! It's good stuff. Uh, Accident caller or seller says, uh, "I'm just uh, like." Sorry, I'm just like the Shrike. I'm pursuing Gary from his own channel and on to here. Ready the portal device. No gravity well here, or is there? Or is there? Yeah. That, Ooh, that, was, that was a pretty cool example of portal weapons, I suppose. Never mm -hmm. seen that in Star Trek before, but it was quite cool. Then they ejected it because budget. But, um... <laughs> yeah. Good episode this week. Woo -hoo -hoo. Yep. Uh... Jop Jopliski says, "Thanks to you guys, my passion in film has grown tenfold. I wish to make f uh, fiction of my own one day. You guys brought that passion out of me. Cheers." Wow. See, that's, that makes us all feel good. I think. Thank you. you. Know? Oh yeah. Um, Go create yeah. something great, please. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we need you. <laughs> we need you. Uh, but that's you know, telling stories is just like one of the the most pure activities you can do. It's just it's a, it's a fantastic exercising creativity um uh, and you know if you just want to write a book or whatever like the only limit is your own imagine your own imagination and there's something really cool about that i mean it, it's it's what we do and when we're talking about the creation of stories we often try to create stories based on what pieces we can find narratives man they're fun they don't always have yeah. to be evil or anything <laughs> yeah uh humsey 73 says this is the way ellie's gay by the way yeah, this is true. the gay. This is the gay. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I oh, thought man. of that on that when I did that tweet. Dang it! It's well, it's only a matter of time until Mando starts doing that. Yeah, um, right. David David Orozco says, "Good evening, drinker and guests. Uh, just purchased the drinker bundle from your campaign. Can't wait to read it. Love your work and also Mauler's. Cheers! Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, that's my." My first ever comic book on Indiegogo. So, um, yeah, excited about that. And it seems to be doing very well. So I'm pleased. Um, next no, one I is I can't TS wait for the spin off Grogu and My Two Dads. Yeah. <laughs> oh. uh, TSM says Sorry. Story you would tell if Disney asked you to make a Star Wars trilogy. At the time of this open bar, I will be streaming for charity. Wish me luck in the 23 hour challenge I have. Good evening to all. 23 hours, that's chump change for a man like Mauler. <laughs> the <laughs> record for us was 29, but... Yeah. I was going to say, like, 72 hours, then you, you can start talking, but, uh, yeah. Um, that's the luck, of yeah. course, though. Yeah, uh, but the question is, um, what story would you tell if Disney asked you to make a Star Wars trilogy? I mean, that's probably outside the scope of what we could just it, come up with off the top of our heads. Is it, cons like, in the current state, or...? Yeah, anything at all. That's a good question. Maybe just in an state. ideal world. Um, well, if it was an ideal world, I, I just I, I I would rather redo all of the sequel trilogy. And honestly, I want like a whole year to write that thing. Like I, I want, and I want to talk to everybody yeah. <laughs> ever about everything and uh, see what we can make of it. But you know what? I think we might just nail it at the outset. We're probably going to have Luke Han and Leia uh, in a scene together. That's probably going to be something that we do. That seems like a likelihood. Yeah. Bold strategy. No, not gonna have Palpatine back. By the way, he's gonna stay dead. Crazy, Ooh. I know, but um, I wouldn't yeah. mind looking into that. Somehow he came back. Yes, yeah, somehow, somehow. 
But people love Thrawn, right, from the EU, so I wouldn't be surprised if we uh, try and implement that a bit in the sequel trilogy. People love but, him. Yeah, I mean, Thrawn's been cast now, apparently. They've cast the actor for him. But like mm -hmm. they're saying that as if that's something we should be excited about. It's no. Like, he's going to appear on some shitty low-budget Disney Plus show. Like, how is that epic? How is that fitting for a character like him? Well, remember that uh, the blue bounty hunter guy? Everyone was super excited to see him. And then he got killed by Boba... Like... <laughs> But he got stabbed by his Boba Fett stick. I mean, no one's truly dead, Mauler. No, no, people have said, like, he'll be back. It's like, yeah, probably everyone will be uh, back. The last question, uh, the last one I'm going to do tonight, I guess, is uh, from Andrew Romanowski. He says, greetings from NYC. Question for everyone. A lot of creatives like using the man in the arena speech by Roosevelt to negate any criticism from critics. Do you think this is a good defense from critics? No. Like, you can critique something without having to make it yourself. Like, the, the man in the arena speech is the idea of, like, well, you unless you've been in there and done it yourself, you're not in any fit position to uh, to criticize something, which I think is a shit defense for, for anything. It's like, well, unless you've made a movie, you can't criticize movies yourself. We usually go to food immediately. It's like, I can tell when it's rotten. And it's like, yeah, but you've never made a five-course meal. It's like, okay. It's wrong. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like, well, yeah, I don't have to be a plumber to know when my toilet's clogged with shit, you know, and it's same issue. You know, you yeah. can apply just like your your own experience of storytelling to to whatever it is you're looking at. Um, you you know, a person who goes and watch a thousand movies uh, is probably going to have a, a reasonable understanding of what makes a good movie, and so they're they can they can use that to critique. I'm pretty sure what they see Tarantino. Here. That was Tarantino's training essentially. He just watched movies. Yeah. Yeah, he said, I didn't go to film school. I went to films. Nope. Uh -huh. yep. And I mean, honestly, I think Roger Ebert's the best example of this because he's probably what I would consider the quintessential uh, critic. But he also wrote a film and it was a horrible movie called Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. Beyond so I think it goes yeah. to show that just because critics may know film doesn't mean they can make a film. Um, but I mean, and a lot I of them will was... concede that too, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like Red Letter Media. <laughs> well, yeah, like, but the inverse is true as well. Like, just because you can make a film doesn't mean you you know what makes a good film. Yeah, well, just ask Ryan Johnson. You, make a film. <laughs> you never see this in the, this direction. Maybe we should. Just because you can make a film doesn't mean you have any idea what good criticism is. Yeah. When you receive it, a lot of them are like, "Man, you mean? No, oh, I don't like that." You're like, "Calm down. You're okay. You're gonna be fine. You're Let's gonna be fine. You sure like the good good stuff. You sure yeah, like yeah. You <laughs> pump your stuff up." Well, and, never hear people say that though, do you? It's like you don't even yeah. know what good criticism is. You just make movies. And Tarant speaking of Tarantino, because like I said, I was reading his books, uh, Cinema Speculation, and you know his uh, the story everybody knows is that he worked at this video store, and that's where he got his training from. No, this guy he says it in the book. That's the common misnomer. He's like, I've been going to movies since I could speak. He's been going to movies like Taxi Driver and shit since he was a little kid, right? Like his mom would take him to these movies and stuff all the time. And so he's been seeing stuff that even a little kid shouldn't see from that age. But because he understood movie making early on, he soaked that all up. So by the time he worked at the video store, he already knew all this stuff. So, like, it was a lifetime of experience of going to all these movies when they first came out, you know. Like, he grew up throughout the six, late 60s and early 70s watching these movies in the cinema. In all these, like, you know, uh, grindhouse theaters and stuff. Yeah. Well, listen... Um... I know that uh, Gary kind of has to leave now anyway, but uh, I think it's probably a good time to finish the stream because we've been going for about three hours now anyway. And uh, man, it's been an awesome stream tonight. We we had about yeah. 12,000 people watching us. Um, it's been great. Uh, I appreciate everyone that's come in for this one. And thank you to all of you guys for, for guesting on this. Um, it's been great to have all of you on. Gary, yeah. uh, Tom, uh, awesome as always. And Chris, and, uh, Chris, who's no longer here with Boy. us, but uh, yeah, he was he was awesome too. Uh, appreciate all of you guys, and um, for everyone who sent me super chats, thank you for that. Um, if any, any of them that we haven't quite got to tonight, we'll catch up with them on Sunday night, Moller and I. So yes. thank you to all you guys. Um, but yeah, hopefully we kept you entertained for a couple hours anyway. But uh, for now, at least that's all that we've got for today. So we're gonna go away now. Bye.